Welcome back to New Southern Heretics. Real quick before we get started, uh, we are uh, up and live on Instagram now. You can follow us at New Southern Heretics. No spaces or underscores, whatever you call it. Um, also, we're currently looking out for some sponsors. So we know that uh, you know, 2020 has been hard on everybody, to say the least. So if you are uh, an artist and a band, an online retailer, an online employer, and you're a small business, we want to help each other out. So if you're interested in marketing, uh, uh, a permanent advertisement on uh, an episode of New Southern Heretics, just DM me at the Instagram page and uh, we'll let you know what our rates are. This goes for uh, all of our listeners in uh, Lake Stevens, Washington, Belleville, Illinois, Valdosta, Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia, Dallas, wherever you are. Um, but without further ado, hello, John. Hello, sir. It's so great to be with you. Yeah. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having the... Uh, uh, testicular fortitude to be on a podcast. I know it's... Uh... Yes, sir. I try my best to have testicular fortitude. <laughs> I, very, I very much appreciate your hospitality about inviting me. Oh, um, absolutely. And would like to start off with a note of gratitude because when we were kids, uh, I was 15 years old and there was only two places in Valdosta that was hiring at the time. When you, If you were 15. You, otherwise, you had to be 16 years old before you start your job. I think mm-hmm. it was Winn-Dixie and... Uh, Texas Roadhouse. Texas Roadhouse. And so I rode my bicycle up to Texas Roadhouse, got me a job as a bus boy cleaning tables at Texas Roadhouse, and met Mr. Coulter Reigns here. Yes, sir. And he was a hard worker. He worked his ass off. And he was the fastest bus boy out there. And I learned <laughs> from him, and I tried to copycat Mr. Coulter and try to be a fast bus boy, too. So he taught me the value of work ethic. And he went up and get, got to be a server. Um, and did a great job as a server. I think he was like the lead fucking server and shit, but... I was pretty good at it till I started having, uh... I always had an issue, I guess, with hecklers. You know what I mean? So oh, I started, people fucking with you at the oh, tables? Yeah. yeah, so I started having uh, folks come in that knew I was working. They would, like, start throwing food at me. And the That's man- fucking a dick thing to do. Yeah, the management there at the time, uh, Tim. Remember uh, that guy? Tiny Tim? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, I'm uh, tiny Tim. he uh, told me essentially, well, what do you want me to do? And the kitchen manager at the time was like, hey, if you want to come work in the back, I'll hire you right now. Oh, yeah, dude. So that's when I started learning like how to uh, that's wonderful. How, to, how to cook and everything. But yeah, I did 10 years in food service and then I got, got burnt out of it. But, yeah, yeah. When you get burnt out of shit, it's time to move on and go on to the next motherfucking thing. Oh, yeah. I don't, uh, I don't like stagnation. Me you know? neither. I like change, constant change and new stuff, new experiences always. Absolutely. Yeah, dude. Um, and then fucking I graduated and went and worked in the back as a food prep. They didn't put me in front of the people though. They wouldn't let me be a server. <laughs> they put me in the fucking back and I just worked as just me by myself. But I like that. Honestly, I thought it was great. Mm-hmm. It's no I, bullshit. I, no people, no bullshit, man. Yeah. yeah. It's just me and the food and cooking. Yeah. That I, I like, um, I've always l- uh, liked jobs where I know exactly what uh, needs to get done, yeah. what they need. And cause then I can excel at like exactly. what it is they need. You Absolutely. Know? Absolutely. I was at a, I was at a job recently and it was like, you're responsible for the outcome of, of our efforts. But I'm not going to give you control of the resources that are used to manifest the the outcomes. Right. So I was in a fucking losing game. I was in a fucking losing game. And I was getting paid good money, too, making good money. Yeah, good engineering money with the NBA. I would, and I fucking quit that job because I just got frustrated with it. Well, I would, I would think that something like that, as far as how you described it, would be like... If this tanks and goes belly up, you're going to be responsible. But yeah. we're not going to give you the tools to be able to improve or prevent any uh, exactly. disastrous uh, outcome. Exactly. Yeah, Despite I, I was trying to make positive changes, but no one was listening to me. So I said, fuck the bullshit. And I hit the eject button. <laughs> <laughs> and I went Good batshit crazy, man. Went batshit crazy. Quit my job and moved back in with my, with my parents. And uh, we're just trying to figure shit out on what the fuck I need to be doing. And exploring psychedelics, tripping my balls off on all kind of stuff, man. Hawaiian baby woodrose seeds. I like those. Those are that's fun. And you can get them legally too. It's totally fine. But well, you're not supposed to eat them. I think it's technically you're supposed to only plant them as ornamental plants. But whatever. There is uh, <laughs> there is something uh, this is 
Pro- this is around the time when salvia was still legal to get. Oh yeah, but I, I smoked salvia. I smoked weird. salvia before. That shit was fucking crazy. Dude. Yeah, that hit me harder than DMT did, as far as like the onset. Oh, you did DMT? I haven't done mm-hmm. DMT. DMT is also weird. Um, I've done ayahuasca. Have you? Yeah, I, I, to, I have not done that. That was fun. I mean, that's it's essentially just, DMT, but yeah. prolonged. Yeah, it was beautiful. It was a beautiful experience. I went to Peru, and just so happened to be, I'm walking through the uh, this place in Cusco, where you go and you acclimate to the higher elevations in Cusco before you make the trek to Machu Picchu. Right. So you go and hang out in Cusco for a while to get acclimated. And I just so happened to be walking through the market, San Pedro. San Pedro was the name of the market, and this is like a big flea market, and they got all kind of food and, all, and beautiful things in there. Um, and I just so happened to be walking through the aisle, and I'm looking, these people got cactuses and shit that they're selling, and all these different hallucinogenic drugs, and uh, I just so happened to talk to the guy, um, and I'm like, do you have any ayahuasca? He's like, yeah. I got it in the back. He doesn't advertise it, but he got it in the back, and I'm like, yeah, hook me up, brother. <laughs> and so he poured me a bottle of ayahuasca tea, and I fucking tripped my balls off on that stuff. Oh, it was beautiful. It was beautiful, but it, it kind of made me a little bit crazy. But did you uh, did you like uh, vomit or like shit yourself? I know those no. are some of the rumors. That... No, no, I never did that. So the first time I did it, I drank I drank a little bit, and it was very beautiful and magical and mystical, and the lights became brighter, and it was like, oh, this is beautiful. And I'm like, and we're like, what is that light in the mountains? Oh my god, look at that light in the mountains. It's an alien or something. And, oh no, it's just a truck. Okay, but <laughs> but the the mysticalness of the part of it was just so beautiful. And then later, um, uh, I did it again, but I drank a little extra. I drank a little extra, and that was uncomfortable. That made me uncomfortable. And I've, I've had uncomfortable trips before, but you got to stay in a constant state of positive mood to prevent the bad trips. And if you do that, you like never really have a bad trip. You maybe get uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. And I'm sitting there, and my girlfriend was with me at the time, who was from Korea. And, uh, you know, I was like, she, she wanted to go shopping or something. And I was like, uh, please don't leave me right now. Can you just stay in my presence just to make sure? And I'm just sitting there thinking, like, just remember to breathe. And I'm like, I'm like I got I to gotta think to breathe because if I, if I don't think on this and make sure I'm breathing, I'm going to maybe stop breathing and die. And I was moaning and stuff and, and kind of like, ah, I I videoed it too, dude. I got a fucking video of myself tripping. That's cool. It's kind of boring to to, to watch, but right. if you're curious, well, it's kind of like a journal entry, right? So exactly. like, it's, it's going to mean a lot more to the the author of the journal entry than it's going to be to like, hey, you want to read my journal? That's very true. <laughs> That's very true. Yeah, very true. Like, who gives a shit? Who gives a shit? I gotta go do my own thing, y'all. I feel, I feel you, man. I feel you. But um, did you have any uh, visions of uh, Mother Ayahuasca? From uh, the no. heavy dose. No, no, sir. Because it's supposed to be, you know, like Mother Earth. Oh, like, that's in, beautiful. Incarnate will, uh, will uh, come to visit you. Oh, at... that's wonderful. No, no, I never had any visions of that. But I was just, I was just tripping my balls off and hallucinating all kind of patterns and shapes and colors and the, uh, the, the uh, tapestries. Is that the word for it? Tapestries and the way that the the people in you look at the Peru, the Peruvian culture. And you look at the way that they knit their things and the patterns, and there's all these diamonds and different shapes, and the diamonds are very geometric. Mm-hmm. Um, that imagery what made total sense after doing ayahuasca. Like those people have been imprinted with the ayahuasca vision, right? And 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 they manifest that with their art, with the way that they sew and they make these blankets and things, and you can see the symbolism in it, and it's absolutely beautiful. Um, but I, I honestly, I loved it. I loved the ayahuasca trip. I thought it was fantastic. Yeah, apparently, you can go to Orlando, Florida. There's an ayahuasca church, and you can you can do ayahuasca in Orlando, Florida. Really? Yeah. I didn't know there was one that close. I know there's um there's a church in Kentucky. I think Ooh. Vice had like I don't watch a lot of Vice, but I love Vice. They um they had a special or a show on. Yeah. It. But um, there's uh, supposedly a, a shaman, a woman uh, somewhere in Tallahassee that brews it, and oh. you have to be. Like she has to like approve you through whatever her vetting process is. Oh, but uh, this uh, yeah, that's interesting. This uh, one girl, uh, one girl I had met on a uh, on a dating app. Yeah, she was just in town uh, uh, because uh, she was going to Tallahassee. She came down from Ohio and said she had been talking with this woman for like a year and a half, two years, uh-huh. and finally got the thumbs up to rock and roll. Yeah, come and have an ayahuasca experience with rock her. and roll, dude. That's awesome. Yeah. Go Seminoles, dude. <laughs> Seminoles. The Native American culture is where it's at. <laughs> I have a lot of respect for the Native American culture mm-hmm. and the uh, 
their reverence for the Mother Earth, their reverence for the Mother Earth, and like what you saw, the, the Mother Ayahuasca or whatever. Yeah. Like, and I think that's very closely related to time perspectives. Have you studied time perspectives at all? As far as like uh, with uh, on a dimensional plane, like how like the fourth dimension is essentially your timeline, but it's a point in time rather than a line. The fifth dimension would be when it's taken the second dimension yeah. principle, right? Okay. And then it's instead of uh, having it just be from one point to another, uh -huh. a line, you have a branch off of it. So it's a second dimension, but on time rather than like on paper. Oh. But I don't know if that's no. what you're talking about. I don't. Um, <laughs> no. No, I'm not that smart. Um, Neither am I. I just saw a YouTube video on it. I didn't come up with this shit. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't understand. I don't fully understand the more than more than four dimensions. I only see X, Y, Z, and time. Yeah, X, Y, Z, and time. Yeah, space, time, space, time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the fifth would be like I guess whatever entities exist that would come to you on like a psychedelic journey, mm -hmm. right? They would be like fifth or sixth dimensional beings oh, because okay, they're, okay, okay. they're post death and they're post biology. Right? Yeah, like, I, I get you. Yeah. yeah, biology is bound to the third dimension. Like, it, it, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. Biology can't transcend 3D. Right. So, because these are like some sort of beings of light, and yeah. that they are transcendent of that, and they would be fifth or sixth dimension. Okay, no, I do understand that then. And yes, I, I agree with that. Um, and I guess that's what you experience when you trip balls. That's, that's the only way I can gather it. And I think that's yeah. something that drew me into. Like old archaic religions and even like old Christianity before the Vatican sort of you know demonized uh, yeah. uh, all sort of psychedelia and yeah. uh, uh, plants. But oh, I mean, the devil! Watch out! Gonna get yeah, you. yeah. Which I mean, I mean, granted, you could definitely have like uh, uh, gin and demon and things like this like come through. It's like a Ouija board. You open a door, yeah. you don't necessarily know what's going to come through that door. Yeah, you got to be careful. Yeah, but at the same time, there's. There's something pretty divine about it. Like, I mean, yeah. you look at, like, all these religions, both Eastern and Western Hemisphere. They were yeah. using ergot, you know, LSD, uh, mushroom, psilocybin, yeah. cacti, mescaline, yeah. and uh, ayahuasca, DMT. Yeah. And it wasn't until the 20th century that all of a sudden this was uh, shown to be uh, evil and dangerous when, for uh, millennia, like, yeah. especially here in the Americas, like, yeah. that's that was their church, was to be like, hey, we need to... Pray and get in touch with the divine. Yeah. So they would take their brew or their cacti and have their ceremony. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And that seems like bullshit to me, man. Like if it's a naturally occurring plant, come from God. Yeah. Why are you gonna outlaw it? I don't. I don't think you can. It's not a drug because it's it's readily available in nature. Exactly. You know what I mean? It was put here for us. Yeah. It was put here for us. The mushrooms that grow in the cow fields that we and you used to. Well, I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to get you in trouble. The, uh, oh, I won't I, say you. But oh, I don't. I don't care. I mean, at this point, bro, I am willing to put every shitty thing I've ever done to anybody on the internet. I, I don't love give it. a damn. I, I don't give it. a damn. I love it. Anybody I was... that I've ever wronged knows I've wronged them because I've come to them guilty. Yes. And like ask for their forgiveness on everything. I don't give a fuck. What people dig up on me at this point. That's Don't beautiful. care. That's beautiful. Don't care. It took me 36 years to get to that point. That's beautiful, man. No, my it. first psychedelic experience was uh, uh, from where you and Little Will and I think maybe Pete. Yeah. Uh, you all went into a pasture and you came back with this bag full of shit covered mushrooms. Fucking rock and roll. And uh, y'all uh, were, were brewing some tea or something and we yep. were about to go to the beach. And I was like, oh, I can't stay in trip with y'all. I'm about to drive. Yeah. I remember you in particular like, you'll be fine to drive here. Just, <laughs> just, just have a little bit of, uh, of tea. And yeah. I, I, had never, um, I had never had mushrooms before. And uh, I, I know bonkers. And uh, But I was okay to drive. Like, like yeah. I, I was just slow driving. I exactly. Could, it was nighttime, so I could see a lot better because you know, my pupils were the size of quarters. Exactly. <laughs> It can help you in many ways. The, 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 the evidence for microdosing supposedly makes you more creative. Yeah. The microdosing of the LSD and the microdosing of the mushrooms and mm -hmm. stuff. But I love eating mushrooms. I remember, I, yeah, we used to trespass all the time. We were, we were bad boys. <laughs> 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 we're badasses, y'all. And we'd jump over the fence and go in the, go in the, go in the fucking cow fields and we eat the mushrooms, right? I'd eat them right out of the cow shit. I'd knock the cow shit off of it. Maybe, yeah. I, maybe I ate a little cow shit, but it's all right. Cow shit comes from God. It'd be all right. 
And, um, I mean, you're still kicking, so. And I'm still, he ain't killed me yet, so I'm going all, motherfucker, I'm going. <laughs> hey, yeah, I agree. Exercise your right to free speech. Yeah. Yeah, and I've wronged a lot of people in the past, and I've asked for forgiveness. Ask Captain Jesus to come in my life and take over. So Captain I, Jesus. I did want to ask you about that. Uh, yeah. Because uh, one of the first things that you said was that uh, you met Jesus on a mountain. Yes, I did. In the flesh. Yeah. That's pretty. Uh, that's pretty wild. Yeah. So I mean, I like wild stuff. So yeah, I'm, me I'm too. all about the mystic me experience too. and shit. Let so. me get another. Bit. Oh, hold, hold on. I skip. I skip. I want to do this in the right order. First, do you, you guys want a bottle of water? By the way, do you want some water? <laughs> Thank you. I, I, first, I, I, I want to take one of uh, one of your uh, brews for uh, storytelling, though. Yeah, take take one, my brother. Um, I need to open me one too to make sure my words are flowing appropriately. Because <laughs> I'm John the Lutheran. John the Lutheran. There's that. I'm part German. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. For you. But, uh, yeah, I forgot at the beginning of this. With the gratitude, thank you for teaching me a hard work ethic. Um, culture motherfucking reigns. And so I gift you with this 18-inch machete. Thank that you God so much. gave me by building a Walmart and putting a machete in the Walmart so that I could buy it and give it to you. And so from this point forward, you shall not be known. If you want, it's up to you. It's not just... Culture motherfucking reigns, but sir, culture motherfucking reigns. <laughs> Knighted with machete. And anytime a motherfucker gives you shit, I give you the authority to circumcise that bitch like a motherfucker <laughs> in accordance with the law. <laughs> well, I, I, I appreciate your generosity. No, yes, sir. Seriously, though, this is awesome. Thank you for yeah, the machete. Yeah, you're very welcome. You're very welcome. I, this is a big fucking machete. It really fucking is. <laughs> it, it makes you feel like a badass, too, when you carry it around. You make you feel like Chief Seattle, and that's what I love about it. Um, yeah, uh, Jesus on the mountain. Yeah, Jesus tell me on about the mountain. It. All right, so I went to. Uh, all right, so I'm, I quit my job. I moved back home. How how old were you whenever uh, all this happened? Thirty five years old. Thirty five. So this would have been the past year or so. Yeah, this was like a couple of months ago. Sweet. Yeah. Um, and I'm in the back of the garden, well, where I grew up at, where my dad taught me how to grow plants my dad's got a green thumb like crazy he just grows all kind of stuff he's got a garden he's got fruit trees he's got all kind of cool stuff and i'm back there and i'm trying to figure shit out and i'm smoking a lot of cannabis um not drinking but smoking a lot of cannabis um tripping balls on different stuff just trying to figure shit out that was just my whatever experience and there was a time where i became obsessed with being in contact with the Mother Earth, being in electrical contact with the Mother Earth, meaning I'm in the backyard with my shoes off and I want my feet in the dirt. Mm. I got to have my feet in the dirt and being outside. And at one point I'm like, I want to <coughs> sleep in the backyard. I want to find out and put me a tent in the backyard. I just want to be outside in the backyard. And obsessed with the Mother Earth and obsessed with my feet in the dirt. And uh, also during this time I had... Uh, a problem it's called a hemorrhoid i call it inside outside asshole syndrome <laughs> which is kind of literally what it is it's absolutely what it was <laughs> i took a picture of it too because i couldn't see down there but i took a picture and saw my fucking colon on the outside of my asshole and i'm like holy shit dude that's and it was painful it was painful and i'm like i quit my job i don't have health insurance i can't afford to go to a doctor i'm not going to a doctor to fix this i'm gonna fix this myself and i'm gonna fix this myself by not pooping don't poop, and then I don't have to wipe my butt, and then that won't hurt, and it'll heal and suck back up in there, hopefully. That was the goal. That was what I was thinking. That's what my logical brain told me would happen. So I stopped eating. I fasted. I fasted. I stopped eating food, or I would only eat a little bit of food. I would try to minimize the amount of food that I ate, and the food that I would eat would be the food that was only growing in the backyard, like the muscadine grapes that my dad grew in the backyard, and I ate grapefruit. I ate some of the citrus, but tried to just not eat a lot of food just because I didn't want to poop. And I also stopped taking my ADD medication, my amphetamines, um, because I didn't want to poop. And amphetamines are a stimulant, make you poop. Yep. Coffee's a stimulant, make you poop. So I stopped drinking coffee. I stopped taking amphetamines. I stopped all that stuff. And um, then I'm in the backyard, um, and I'm still obsessed with the Mother Earth, but... But uh, not take not taking you know it's probably a, maybe it was a week or five days I don't, I don't know what it wasn't forty days I ain't a badass like Jesus but um, <laughs> uh, but I, I was I was fasting basically 
and I'm in the backyard, and I had this this vision, and it was in the nighttime, um, in the nighttime, and I was in my dad's garden, in my dad's garden where he, he raised me, he bought that house when I was one year old, and raised me and taught me about growing plants and stuff like this, and I, and I was in the dirt, and I had this vision that, that, um, that the sun, like the, the sun that's burning in the sky, the star, was immediately behind me. And my eyes, were, I think my eyes were closed, and it was just like the sunlight, this, this intense, most powerful energy behind me. And I recall, like, I could look back at it slightly, and it was like, ah, oh, it hurt my eyes. And I was like, ah, oh, it hurt my eyes, I can't look back. And, and, and he didn't say this to me, but it was like, I felt it in my soul and it was like look there's an infinite energy behind you right now and I'll give you all that you want but you better be fucking careful because if you look back at me too much I will fucking kill you I will fucking kill you and but at the same so it was it was terrifying but at the same time a beautiful experience because it felt like I was playing kind of tug of war with this infinite energy and in the Bible, it says something about John the Baptist when he, he gets to come back to earth or something like that. John the Baptist will return, and uh, he's gonna get to do special. Uh, he, he get to do some special fucking uh, uh, miracles and stuff because he was he was the disciple whom Jesus loved. And I was like, it was like looking back at the sun, and I'm like playing tug of war with, with this motherfucker. Like, he's like, I'm gonna kill you if you look back at me more, but. I love you. You my you my boy. You my homeboy. We're playing tug of war together. I'm like ah, and and I'm like, come on, God, let me give me the. Uh, I want to shoot the lightning. Give me the powers to shoot the lightning, like John the Baptist. Do the special miracles. Come on, motherfucker. Let me get the let me get those powers, man. And we're playing back back and forth tug of war, and uh, and and, and um, I forget if it was during this time or after this time or just before the time, but it was very it was it happened the same night, but basically they had this vision. And I dedicated my life to Jesus Christ in the dirt, and I was crawling around in the dirt, like, like groveling like a bitch. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, take over my entire life, and you tell me what to do, and I will be your bitch, and I will do anything you tell me to do. And I think at that point, the Jesus Christ that lived, or the spirit of Jesus Christ that lived from 2,000 years ago, came into my body like a motherfucking freight train, dude, and just bam. Hit me like a ton of bricks, man. It was crazy. And the next day, or the following next days, I was like rendered almost incapacitated. I was having trouble forming coherent sentences. I was afraid of a lot of things. I was terrified. Like the fear of God is for real. I was like terrified of fucking everything. And I'd open my Bible at random, and I'd be like, I'd open my Bible at random, and it would be like, oh, a bunch of gnashing of teeth, screaming and gnashing of teeth. And I'm like, oh, my God, I killed him. Oh, no. <laughs> and, then, and then I opened it up some other, other way, and it was, like, it was like, I saw you under the fig tree marveling at the thing, and I'm going to show you much more awesome stuff than this. And I was like, I was under the fig tree. My dad has figs in the backyard. I was under the fig tree, cool. and I was marveling at the beauty of the nature because I, I love nature. I love nature so much. And... And it was like, it was just absolutely crazy, but he like rendered me totally incapacitated. Um, I became obsessed with being outside. I wanted to be, I didn't even want to go in the house. So I thought the house was like the devil, dude. I'm like, the house is, I got to stay outside all the time as much as I can. I, I got to do a tent outside. I'm going to sleep outside. I'm going to sleep under this thing. My mom took videos of me acting crazy too. And uh, I was like in the dirt with my feet all in the dirt. And my mom is videoing me like, you're crazy as shit, dude. <laughs> and she's like, I'm putting you in a mental hospital. Are you crazy as shit. And she's videoing me, and she's like, uh, she's like, John, you haven't slept because I was having trouble sleeping too. Like I, I don't know, I couldn't sleep. Well, yeah, it's just still like within the same month that you quit amphetamines. Mm -hmm. uh, when, whenever I, I was on amphetamines for like six or seven years, and like abused them like badly. And yeah. Then whenever I got off, yeah, like all of the. Um, the withdrawals is the hardest thing to like, like huh. quit that I've yeah. been addicted to was amphetamines. But oh, wow. the sleep schedule, it took me a while to get used to it Back again. Back to sleep, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I was used to just like, I'll sleep for a couple hours and two days, and then I'll be fine. Yeah. And then I'll just keep going. Oh, you know? wow. Wow. Yeah. 
That's interesting that um, uh, talking about the idea of like uh, the sun behind you and your yeah. vision. Yeah. Because um, like uh, astro theologists, which try to look at the connection between the east and the west, in particular, uh, uh, one being uh, the uh, the Christ and Krishna yeah. being of like essentially the same thing, just told from different mytholo- uh, oh. mythological perspectives. Yeah. But astrotheology uh, also postulates that certain things in the in the Bible were purposely mistranslated. I think the argument is that um, uh, you know a, a Lucifer or the devil, however yeah. you want to personify it, yeah. uh, deceived uh, uh, everyone within the organization itself. So, i.e., uh, the the uh, the Club of Rome, the oh, Vatican wow. yeah. is like their. Uh, antithetical towards uh, the idea of the Christ oh. uh, because it's used as a means of control. But um, they also state that Jesus is the uh, uh, historical context aside is the literal name of our son. It's the name of like the son within our yeah. world. Yeah. And, and that the, for that. And that the way to transcend this life and get out of the cycle of reincarnation oh. or the de-evolution where you would descend a level, yeah. like, where it ties in like the... We're de-evolving right now every day. Well, I, society is. I think Earth is Earth is the... Uh, it's the top floor of hell. It's the bottom floor of heaven. It is... Oh, that's well, fascinating. It's, it's eternally chaos, right? Yeah. It's, it's the green chakra in the giant God being that okay. supposedly all the cosmos would rest in. Oh, interesting. And that the way to transcend... As the Bible says, and Jesus says, in my name only, you will yeah. be saved. Yeah. The mononym refers to a name that Rome cannot control. Our, our surnames, our full names, it, it has a, a, a stock coat or a stock number associated with it. You know, you can, oh. look, you can look up your full name and your birth certificate number on the yeah. stock market, and you can see how much you're worth. Can you? Yeah. Like, and human beings are worth billions and billions and billions of dollars, you know, just... From we're our all, innate we're all fucking value. slaves, dude. Right, but the slaves uh, to the central bankers. Yeah, totally. So this this idea was that you have to have your um, your ethereal body, your consciousness, yes, sir, elevated to a higher, more benevolent and positive uh, vib- uh, vibratory yeah. status yeah. in order for whenever you die, for the sun to allow you to pass through the wormhole and into the next realm. That's awesome. I don't disagree with that. That sounds cool as shit to me. Mm -hmm. That sounds cool as shit, yeah. I don't think that the religions are fundamentally incompatible. I don't think at all. I think Buddha was right. I think uh, Muhammad was right. I think Jesus was right. But I think that if you believe it, like I think that if you're a Christian, you go to the, maybe you go to the streets of gold when you die. Um, If you're you're a Muslim, you're going to go and get your 17 virgins or whatever it is, you know? Right. You know, but I think the goal, the goal is that for the Christians, the goal is to pretend that you're Jesus on this planet. Pretend that you're Jesus and try not to sin. And Jesus was a nice guy. He was a super nice guy and cool guy, you know? Right. He got angry sometimes. He went into the church and flipped over the tables. He's like, what the fuck are you doing in my father's house? You turn it into a den of thieves. Yeah. He got pissed off at that. Well, they but were charging interest, so I could imagine. Usury. <laughs> Usury is a sin, dude. Yeah. Usury is a sin. Totally. We is. need to learn from the Sharia law in that regard. Problem is, whenever you give the controls like that, I'll have some of these conversations with like folks of mine that are, I guess, more more full to the left or right, politically minded. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. Yeah, I like the nuance with it. Uh, uh, me but, too. But I'll try to tell them like like you know when the the right goes too far, you look at the Middle East, like you look at look at everything that has happened with the Wahhabis and. Uh, Islam with the Zionists with Judaism and oh. to an extent with yeah. Rome and Christianity yeah. you know like they're uh, they're uh, perversions of certain things but oh. at the same time that's they'll make arguments for like Sharia law where it's like oh yeah but all the citizens are taken care of it's like oh yeah I mean I get that but yeah. women have two thirds of the testimony that a dude does in court you know and they're like murdering people because of like you're sleeping with someone of the same gender, it's like, I don't think these are compassionate values, guys. Agree. I agree with that. I think the word, the word of the day is love. Yeah. Love. Then that's what they say, The all of the law, like all the law and everything in the Bible, uh, the prophets have said, everything, is, is, everything hinges on two fundamental commandments. Two fundamental commandments. And that is love God with all your heart, soul, and mind, 
and two, love your neighbor as yourself. Yeah. And if you do that, you're good to go. You're good to go. And if you're killing people, are you loving your neighbor as yourself? I don't know. I don't know. That doesn't seem right to me. I don't like it. Um, and yeah, the Islam is a fast-growing religion. I think it's. I think the reason for that is you get 17 virgins in heaven, and what guy doesn't like that idea of getting 17 virgins? But I don't know what the women get out of it. It seems like the women are getting shafted. Because I think they'll they cut their clitorises off and shit in some of those countries and yeah. Lebanon and stuff. Well, yeah, the um, that a, don't seem right. No, there's a sect of um, Islam that became really prevalent in the uh, uh, 18th century, I believe. Yeah. Called Wahhabism. Okay. So Wahhabis were like they detested the ideas of gravestones, of churches, huh. of like anything that I guess. Here in the West, I mean, Jehovah's Witness, I guess, is the most fundamental, like, okay. conservative that you can get wow. as far as Christianity, where they're like, we don't celebrate our children's birthdays, we don't celebrate Christmas or Thanksgiving, we go to church on these days. It's like, hmm. your kids are going to rebel super fucking hard yeah, whenever dude. they get teenagers, and, you know. Let's go full opposite and go, every day's a holiday. Every day is Thanksgiving. Every day is Christmas, or every day is whatever holiday you want it to be. You know, be I, grateful for every day. Yeah, every I, day. Say, I say, as cheesy as it is, I say my prayers every morning because it becomes a mantra. Yeah. You know? And the, uh, I was talking with a, a friend of mine about, I was like, you know, if all, all, the, all this dark art shit where they've been, they've been doing it just as long, they become prayers or incantations. So I... Even if nothing happens, there's got to be something significant with repeating a prayer daily. It's an incantation. It you is. know what I mean? It's yeah. it's, it's uh, uh, no different than uh, practicing a diet or an exercise daily Absolutely. or an instrument. You yeah, know, like yeah. it's it's going it's changing something. It's yeah. strengthening, a, flexing a muscle. Exactly. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I would much rather uh, flex a muscle for uh, benevolent, divine yeah. purposes. Agree. Than to Either just sort of like we were talking about before, being stagnant, yeah, like yeah, or you know, um, uh, praising low vi- uh, low vibrational uh, energies. Yes, yes, exactly. I agree completely. Um, yeah. So every day, every day, I wake up and be like, I'm still alive. Holy shit, that's fucking great. That's awesome. I got a whole another day to yeah. do stuff. I can do whatever I want. I can start a radio podcast show. You should. You got, <laughs> if you got, some, if you got some, I've told this to. So many people was like, yeah. if you, if, if you have the inkling to be like, like I kind, I kind of want to start a podcast. I don't know what to talk about. I'm like, bro, just do it. Yeah. Just do it, man. It, it's like I've been doing it. This is the thirtieth episode. Yeah, and just you know, just started this past year, but by by thirty episodes now, like like yeah. all all of the like, well, not I shouldn't say all, a lot of the hiccups that I would have initially. Yeah, you, you don't have anymore. Not not only that, but I'm able to um. Pull words out of the ether and ideas out of the ether yes. and articulate them in a more eloquent manner right. than what I was able to initially. Exactly. You know, practice makes perfection. Exactly. Right. You talk to people like what you're doing, talking to me, talking. To, you talk to all these people. You're gonna get really smart. You're gonna learn a lot about a lot of different shit. That's mm-hmm. why you know about all this astrophysics stuff. And I have no idea what that is. I don't know. <laughs> it's pretty. Um, I got. I got into that. There's a. There's a flat earther I enjoy, Santos Bonacci. Yeah. And rather than. Most flat earthers, they, they take it from like a, a proverbial middle finger towards NASA, yeah. where they'll use the scientific method to deconstruct modern physics. And I, I think that's absolutely fascinating. But cool. this guy, Santos Bonacci, he does everything from a mystical and zodiacal point of view. Okay. So he ties in the zodiac and Christianity and uh, uh, Hinduism all into like one thing. Oh, that's fun. It's it's really, really fascinating. That is interesting. The guy who baptized me just the other day, his name was Yeshua. Oh yeah? His name is Joshua. But I'm calling him Yeshua because it makes it more awesome. Well that's that and, is what it is. I think and, that was the first uh, Latin derivative uh, version of yeah. of uh, uh, was it nun? N U N the letter N oh. it, it was a, a symbol that was used to represent Jesus oh, back in the day. Okay. Interesting. You know, you ever see that fancy looking N symbol where no. it's like, it's uh, I forget what they're called. And Some not. sort of iconography. You know, like the okay. the, the fish. Oh where, yeah. You know, they're like, oh yeah, it's a, it's a Jesus fish. Yeah. Like, no. <laughs> this, this is like the letter N, but it stands for none. But that was 
Okay. Uh, the name of the character, character not as in like a person, but yeah. the text. Yeah, like yeah, character yeah, yeah. For uh, Jesus. Yeah, but yeah, this guy baptized me just like last week, man. I took the double dose of the Jesus. Took the double dose. I got baptized when I was five years old, like a kid, and went to the private Christian schools in South Georgia in the Bible Belt, and they were super Christian schools too. They made you cut your hair, tuck in your shirt, you don't do this. And I saw kids get their mouths washed out with, with soap for saying crud, because crud was a substitutionary word for shit, is what they said. I mean, it was super strict. It was super strict. But um, I went to the Jesus schools, did all that stuff, and um, but then left at like in the eleventh grade or something because they kicked my buddy out of out of school because he was a troublemaker. He was a class clown, but he was my best friend. He was funny as shit. He would he would make, he would cut jokes, man, and we would be la- he he would have us laughing so hard that my diaphragm hurt <laughs> at the end of the day because we'd be laughing the entire class because he was just such a fun guy and hilarious. But they kicked him out because he was a troublemaker, and uh, I was like, I'm coming with you, brother. Uh, we're going to hang out. I'm going to Valdosta High School, too. So I quit, went to Valdosta High School, so I'm a wildcat. And, uh, but, yeah, but then later in life, took the double dose again and plunged again and said, okay, Jesus, I'll do whatever you want me to do. And that's when I went from John the Baptist to St. John, and I took the double dose. Now I'm St. John, bitch. <laughs> and I'm like Neo from The Matrix, basically, because i got to prepare the way for Captain Jesus to come back to the planet. Um, um, here's here's something interesting because uh, yes, we were talking about the, this through text the other day about um, this concept of the uh, the son of man yeah. returning right yeah because it's mentioned all of the um, it's fascinating all the, the names, Bibles the names they have for Jesus are fascinating mm-hmm. this uh, one in particular I was watching this uh, I think Spacers is the name of the channel okay but uh, they were pulling up a few lines from the uh, the gospel and talking about son of man they were tying in with the age of pisces ending and the age of aquarius beginning oh interesting and you know tying those back into jesus and yeah uh, scripture uh <laughs> but we're uh, we're approaching a uh, uh what's it called a grand solar minimum so the um the solar radiation from the sun yeah that's important yeah so if you uh if you look, the solar radiation is starting to go down. It's a uh, uh, they use ice core data, and you can track like a, it's almost a four hundred year cycle okay. between one sol- grand solar minimum and another one, and mm. it looks just like a waveform, right? Oh. And so, like whenever you know the wave goes into a valley, yeah. solar radiation is lower. Therefore, the temperature is much lower on Earth versus yeah. when it's higher. Oh. You have more CO two output. You have yeah. a higher temperature. Yeah. Um, but this uh, grand solar minimum, as it's occurring now, they were tying it in for the return of a son of man, as they uh, as they called it. Um, they were predicting uh, all, t- all this type of uh, geological and uh, astronomical phenomena. Hmm. So the um, there's a, a relationship of magno electricity and uh, dielectricity and electricity mm-hmm. between the sun and the earth, right? Yes. So the sun is uh, 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 a lot bigger of a battery than the earth is, so Absolutely. to speak. It's so, the source of everything on the planet. Yeah, all, 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 all energy. Life. Yeah, all life comes from the sun. Mm-hmm. Um, so when it's discharge is, uh, done, mm-hmm. the earth has to discharge in tow, right? So whenever it's solar radiation I say levels it's... out, yeah. So then you will start seeing things like, uh, volcanic eruptions oh. and, uh, 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 land shifting. They're even predicting like earthquakes so intense that it will cause coastlines to appear and some to disappear. Yeah. Entirely. Yeah. And the that, Earth makes new land with volcanoes. Volcanoes make land. Mm-hmm. They're uh, attributing this. Nobody. They're attributing this to be like much more quickly than what we'll see from like like out in the Pacific. Uh, oh, uh, the Ring of near, Fire. Yeah, near Java where they have like islands yeah. are forming all the time. That yeah. They predict that this would be like almost near instantaneous soil liquefaction. So you'll have just oh, mountains shit. just bloop. Just like level out like Whoa. completely, and from the sea line you'll have more mountains like rise up, wow. like away from wherever the liquefaction is. Yeah, you'll have like the inverse of it. That's interesting. They, they also tied in uh, some, uh, uh, I guess, more esoteric beliefs with that 
uh, Atlantis sinking would have been in the Atlantic oh, itself. Yeah. And that you can even look on Google Earth at this giant landmass that's uh, underwater, but you can see the topography oh, wow. of it. And that they yeah. predict that was an, an old continent that sank. Absolutely. Well. That absolutely could have been possible. I think the Earth used to be a lot more interesting than it is today. You do the research on the fucking pyramids and shit. I got a book. His name is uh, Christopher Dunn. He wrote a book called The Giza Power Plant. Mm. And he theorizes that the Great Pyramids and stuff, it used to be power plants. And he talks about experiments where people go on top of the top of the pyramids with, I think it's called a Leiden jar. I'm not sure what's inside of it. Maybe some acidic liquid that makes it a little battery or something. Is that little, uh, the, what they presume the torch lights were, that it wasn't actually fire, but they used yeah. like... Yeah! Electricity! Yeah! Electricity! Yeah. And there's something to do with the waters that is below. Water is, was below the pyramids, like the... Uh, Look, we have aquifers now. Aquifers? Mm -hmm. Something about the, the aquifers below the water and the shape of the pyramid and the materials of construction of the pyramid, which were granite, which have electrical properties when you vibrate granite. Hmm. Um, and the fact that there was a gold cap on the top and says that something about with the geometry of the pyramids and it being in the center of the landmass, just so it happens to be right in the center of the landmass. Maybe this was when it was Pangea, I don't know, whatever. But... Um, and the geometry of the pyramids and its location on the Earth, and it being uh, in dimensions that were such that the pyramid was able to resonate with the natural vibrations of the Earth. They're called Schumann resonances. It was able to resonate uh, in sympathy, in sympathy like a tuning fork. You know, a tuning I got fork you. works. Yeah, yeah. And uh, something to do with that. And the difference between the electromagnetic potential between the ground below and the sky above, because you can measure that. The, the, you can measure a voltage change between the earth and the sky. The higher up you go, the bigger the difference. Totally. Yeah. And something they were able to harness the power of the vibrational frequencies of the earth. And this guy in his book, he goes into detail about the chambers and stuff. And they're like, oh, this is the queen's chamber. She's, he's like, no, man. And he's like, he's, he's studying this stuff. And he lays it out very, very well. He's an engineer, smart guy. And says that, you know, oh, this chamber, he, he theorizes that maybe it was full of water. And they were using the electricity to split the water into hydrogen and oxygen. Oh, wow. And do all these crazy chemical processes and make electricity. And it was, seems like a, a way to generate clean electricity, too. And we don't have to pump all these carbon emissions into the atmosphere. We don't have to subject ourselves to the Koch Brothers propaganda. Right. Koch Brothers propaganda. Now, um, we the, don't need, you know, maybe we don't need crude oil anymore. There was something I saw. Um, it was, I think it may have been Randall Carlson was talking about. But okay. Anyway, the, um, like the shape of the pyramids... You know, that's, it's one of the platonic solids, you know? What's that like? Um, platonic uh, solids would be um, the most simple shapes you can make with polygons. Oh, so, okay. So uh, a three-sided pyramid would be the most simple shape because yeah. you have three uh, triangles on each side and yeah. one at the bottom. So, yeah. Um, but, the, um, you know, Tesla talked about we live in a realm, right? That realm? We don't live on a planet. We live in a realm. That's fascinating. So... He also, he believed in an ether, and he believed that we could tap into this ether where presumably our moon is going around us. I believe in the ether. Yeah, I do too, 100%. Yeah. Um, but um, this, this idea would be like if we're on a, a, a plane of inertia on a toroidal field, right? So if you imagine just like, like a plane, right? Now imagine right. the pyramid sitting on top. Remind me what right? toroid means? Uh, toroidal. Toroidal. Um, I think it has something to do with Taurus. Toroidal. Like a Taurus field. Okay. Like, um, kind of like, um, what is it? Yeah, it's things you can get in Spencer's where you'll, it'll be like a little lightning shooting up at this, uh, little, uh, little ball. Oh, yeah. And you'll put your hand on the ball. I and, got one of those in the back of my truck. Got it from Hobby Lobby. Yeah, yeah. Those things are badass. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, um, I would imagine then, like, what if under the pyramids... It's the same. Oh, fascinating. Like, as above, so below, right? And oh, they wow. were able to tap into that because yeah. they, they uh, some folks postulate that, you know, uh, Egypt and uh, uh, the northern part of Africa 
was where uh, the graveyard of the world essentially was. Like, it wasn't just royalty, but, like, oh. where the Sahara is, it used to be this, you know, lush paradise yeah, back in the day. Yeah, Yeah. The Garden of Eden. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, I would wonder then if uh, your tuning fork uh, reference made me think about this, that if they took the this platonic solid, mm-hmm. a pyramid, and then doubled it so it's a diamond oh, instead... Wow. And they found a way to cut that with, say, like waters running through. Oh, yeah. Like oh, then you could have a, a a pole at one top oh. of the pyramid and a pole at the other uh, bottom part that would be underground. That's fascinating. Yeah, that would make sense too because then it'd be uh, symmetrical. Yeah, symmetry. Yeah, is important. That's interesting. I've not heard that. Yeah, and it could be like I went to Corral. Uh, it just so happened to be up in. Uh, it's called Corral. C. A R A L Corral in Peru, and um, they apparently just they just started ex well they're still actively excavating this site, and they claim that Corral Peru is older. I'm pretty sure I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure Corral Peru is older than the Giza than the Giza pyramids is that they, they say. And I, that's fascinating. I, and they I have, buy that man. And they have pyramids there too. They got pyramids there too, and they had a reverence for the fire. They were obsessed with fire, and they had these big rings that they built, these big rings, and they would have a fire in the center of the ring, and they built these channels, these air channels under the earth so that they could channel extra oxygen to get the fire to keep it burning. Mm. And there was just like a uh, an obsession with the fire itself, which I can understand that. I can see how we would worship fire back in the day. Oh, totally. Like, uh, I think that epigenetic memory comes into play, too. Epigenetic memory, you familiar with that concept? No, explain it to me. Um... Uh, epigenetic means apparently so you got your genes genetic epi means on top of on top of the genes epigenetic and the idea is that the lessons and the learnings from your ancestors are somehow implanted into your mm. genes yes from your fathers I do I do believe in that and they say that there are some people out there who just have a natural talent for playing piano or playing guitar and something like that, and they don't know where it came from, but it's just whatever their ancestor was good at playing it or whatever, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, like, even today, like, when I did, when I took the Jesus Plunge, um, I think because my grandfather also took the Jesus Plunge, and he was a good man, a very good man, um, and a good businessman, my grandfather now sends me clues in the physical world from the spirit world, and I see my grandfather's, like, uh, symbology and stuff like this, and I'm, I'm probably gonna die just like my grandfather did too. With fucking cancer, blood cancer is what he fucking died of. Um, Worst ways to go. Yeah, yeah, he was very sick in his later days. But there, and there's certain things that he told me later in his days that come from the Holy Spirit, that come from the magical energy universe, whatever you want to call it. Especially in his older days, he told me some things, and he he, he and I was talking a mile a minute too because I just I'm ADD. I talk a mile a minute. And he, but he, he was very purposeful about some of the things that he would tell me, and he would muster up the strength to tell me the Native Americans were very interested in that as well, John, and put something into my being that is later, I think, going to be manifested. And he put me on a mission in a way. You know, it's kind of weird. But, um, was he, uh, uh uh, religious uh, uh, for the duration of time. You knew him? or Yeah, 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 he was. He was. Christian. He was Christian. He was a deacon at his church and stuff like that. Because, um, yeah, like when I took the, when I went crazy, <laughs> when I went when I went crazy and I lost the ability to communicate. All right, sorry. Oh, you're good. And, I, and uh, I went crazy in my backyard and I was like, I was afraid to be alone for a while. I wanted to be like with my parents and like, don't leave me. I don't want to be by myself. Right. And, um, and, and I went crazy. And then also after that, I became obsessed with smoking tobacco. And I'm like, I got to have, and I felt like my whole, I was just, I was just like, like I was, I was so anxious and nervous and confused, dazed and confused. And I needed something to calm my nerves. I needed something to calm my nerves. And then after that point, I started drinking again, and I started smoking cigarettes. And I never in my life liked smoking cigarettes. But after that experience, I like smoking cigarettes now. But I before I didn't. I never liked smoking cigarettes at all. I gotta quit this. But um, I was obsessed with smoking cigarettes, smoking the tobacco, and um, also 
obsessed with being outside and being in contact with the Mother Earth and the dirt. And uh, it seemed like everything was so loud. It was like everything was so loud. The traffic was just obnoxious. I hated all traffic. I hated, um, I don't know, any, any type of bull. I don't know. It was just like the lights were bright. The sounds, everything was so loud. I just wanted peace and quiet. All I, I became obsessed with putting seashells up to my ears and just listen to the beauty in the seashells. And that was quiet and divine and peaceful. I wanted two seashells so I could put one on the other ear and just listen to seashells and not have to listen to any bullshit. If, uh, if anybody's listening out there, if a uh, cool idea for crafty people, uh, a set of uh, headphones that are just made out of uh, conch shells instead. I agree. So, so you can get that, that stereo effect with two seashells. Absolutely. Hands free. Absolutely. That. That's a great idea. That's the best headphones, man. Then you listen to the music of the divine always. Mm -hmm. It sounds like... It's beautiful, beautiful sound. But I became obsessed with that. And then I was like, Obsessed with uh, electromagnetic radiation, and I'm like, I don't like being around all these fucking power lines. These power lines emit because they're flowing AC electricity through. Right. There's an electromagnetic field, and I don't like that. That's maybe fucking with my head. Um, they're putting thoughts into my head and stuff, and being mind controlled, and being mind controlled by the power lines. I got to be out of the power lines. So, mom and dad, take me out to my grandfather's property. He has 250 acres, and he took me out there. He took me out there, and uh. Went out there, and I just wanted to be in the peace and quiet in the nature. But interestingly enough, he's got high-voltage power lines running through his property. They put the high-voltage power lines through there that Georgia Power did. Um, but I wanted to go away from the power lines, so I go to the back of the property. But my parents are freaking out because I'm acting just crazy as shit. I'm, I'm almost unable to communicate with people. I'm unable to form coherent sentences. I'm just I'm constantly smoking cigarettes, which is atypical. Right. Um, but I want to go to the back of the property. And I want to just be in the nature and be with the Mother Earth and be in the wilderness. And I went back there and my parents are like freaking out. I don't know why. My mom, man, I don't, I don't know how to say that, but they were worried, understandably, worried about their son. Because um, I'd gone batshit fucking crazy. Now, was this before or after? After, after the vision. After the vision. Because the vision left me like almost totally incapacitated, like it almost fucking killed me. Right. Almost like God came behind me and was like, I'm body slamming you, bitch. He grabbed me and <laughs> body slammed me into the next dimension. He was like, you fucking, no, sir. He was like, you better recognize, bitch. And he body slammed me because I got brainwashed at the Jesus schools. Yeah. that I used to uh, be told going to Catholic school, they would ask our opinion on like a, a, a passage or a sermon that was given. Yeah. And I would give my opinion and they would tell me I was wrong. I'm like, how... How can you tell me my opinion's wrong? Like, as far as, like, what a passage, like, in the Bible or, like, what a, a homily, like, what the yeah. priest was saying to the congregation. And they're like, no, that's not what it means. Like, you're wrong. I'm like, that's that's wild to, like, I agree. tell somebody that, especially a kid, you know. It like, means different things to different people at different times in their life. Oh, yeah. I was uh, uh, talking about this with a, with a lady friend uh, last night that, you know, you can... You can tell people to, on a piece of paper, write down the definition of the word God in 500 words or less, and no two people are going to have the same answer. Right. None of them are. You know what I mean? Yeah. And there, there's something, uh, uh, to me, beautiful about that, about I that agree. subjectivity. I agree. You know? And maybe they're all right. Maybe. The, um, you know, it's, um, you, at least with me, I, I have found myself... Again, like, you know, being raised Christian, now I the closest way to describe my religious beliefs, I don't like the churches, but uh, would be Christian shamanism, you know, where, That's like... That's fascinating. I, I believe, um, you know, these these old religions where yeah. the idea of, like, using psychedelia in yeah. order to pray, like, is, is, is very powerful and literal. Like, I agree, I agree. And... Taking the uh, the ideas that uh, you know the Christ talked about, as far as you know, like this is how you should treat people to live a harmonious life. Exactly. If you want your life to be good, then uh, one of the most surefire ways you can uh, 
uh, uh, try to make that a reality is by making the lives of those around you exactly better. Exactly. Like if, if you make the world a better place yeah. than what you were given the world. Exactly. Then like that's how you your life will improve. Exactly. It's better to give than it is to receive. Absolutely, because it's karma's real. It's gonna come back to you threefold. Exactly. Karma's got a conscience, it's just lagging just and behind. That, that's exactly <laughs> the word that Jesus used. <laughs> When he explained it, he said karma. He's a big believer in karma. Yeah. He used the word karma. Fascinating. But yeah, I, so I ran, so I, and I, I wanted to just be outside in the nature, and I wanted to run too, and run and walk. Walk. In my mind, that was walking with God. Walking with the nature was walking with God mm -hmm. and being in the wilderness. And I wanted to do that. Um, and I think I, I, I think I was going barefoot or something. And also, uh, up to this, preceding this just for a couple of days or something like i was obsessed with walking in the, with my bare feet on and stuff and i had all these cuts and shit on my feet like i it was like leprosy man all these sores and shit <laughs> on my feet man and i wanted to walk into nature i wanted to be in the nature and i wanted to be um free of what i thought was the unrighteousness and in my mind at the time unrighteousness was closed because it come from man Come from man, it don't come from God, so it's therefore unrighteous. So I was like there with my shirt off and I'm in my shorts and I'm barefooted running around the wilderness and my parents are like, This guy's going fucking nuts. <laughs> and um, and but all I wanted was some peace and quiet with the nature. Right. And I, so I was going running and, and walking and running and my mom is following me in her Cadillac, like from the Matrix movie, dude. Like the Cadillac from the Matrix movie? She's following me around the wilderness with her Cadillac. So all I wanted was some peace and quiet with the nature, but instead I got this machine demon behind me with the noises, and I just wanted to be free of all that stuff. And I'm like, fuck this shit. So I take off running like through the woods or some shit. And I got the cops called on me. Oh, shit. My parents called the sheriff's department. The sheriff's department came out there, and it was one car, and he's like, uh... And my mom's telling him that, oh, he's been he's been smoking cannabis. He's been smoking cannabis. He's probably laced with something that made him go crazy. And he stopped taking his he stopped taking his amphetamines. He's gone fucking nuts. He's crazy, man. And um, so then the sheriff's department is following me on my grandfather's property. I got sheriff's department cars following me. My parents' cars following me. And I'm just trying to run and get some fucking peace and quiet in the wilderness. And, and I'm sitting there, I'm like, these guys are the fucking agents from the fucking Matrix. And the more they see me, the more it's just going to be bad news, man. And so I take off running through the woods, and then they call more cops. And I'm like, okay, the only reason they can see me is because of my unrighteousness, my clothes. So I strip butt-ass naked. And I'm like, if I strip butt-ass naked, then they can't see me. I'll be invisible to them, because then I'll be righteous. But they can still see me. <laughs> that's what I was thinking at the time that's, it made sense to me at the time but I, I guess I was wrong and uh, and I take off running through the swamps and shit and I'm running through the swamps and I'm in Bacon? the water this is in Valdosta, this is Lowndes County dude, screw that man Woo. and it's swamp land and uh, I start swimming and I'm like, okay, hold on and I'm like, uh, what I have to do to get rid of all this evilness is to fill my perception with nothing but good and purity, which in my mind at the time was the nature and the beautifulness of the nature and the natural environment. So I would run in the woods, and they'd be yelling for me and stuff, and I'm running away from them in the woods, naked, butt-ass naked. And I'm like, well, maybe if I splash in the water enough, I'll turn into a fish, like the Christ symbolism with the fish. and yeah. the, they'll put the fi I'm going to turn into a fish, and, and, and I'll be gone, or I'll turn, whatever. Um, or maybe if I fill my perception with all of this stuff, they'll just magically go away and be gone for all of eternity. And I don't have to deal with any of the bullshit. So I'd be sitting there in the wilderness and I was like in the water in the swamp and I'd hear some fucking truck driving by, um, cause the highway was not far away and it was just like, ah, I hate the truck sound. I hate the truck and the traffic sound. Splash more. Splash to get rid of the truck sound. And the more I splash it, I get rid of it. And if I hear someone yelling at me, I splash more, fill my perception with nothing but that, and they will magically disappear into the ether. And in that way, uh, my goal at the time, because at the time I was going, I was going batshit crazy, dude. I thought that God gave me the power to be Adam, to be, to make the world perfect again. Um, and this was my opportunity to do that, and I don't want to let him down. And in my perception, that meant 
I gotta get rid of all the humans. Because we're kind of full of shit. <laughs> and the way we run our society is, is really sad. The kind of humans that's come out of this country, the kind of humans that, that we got all these profit for profit prisons and I think it's always been like that. It's just remixed yeah. into different times. I think a good way I've put it before and I'll butcher it at the time I thought it sounded so eloquent, but that, yeah. this notion of um of multiverse or anything, I don't think it's really a multiverse, so to speak. I think ideas like that and the deja vu are more or less and even sometimes it happens on psychedelic trips. Yeah. It's us remembering our past lives. The only time that exists is now. These other True. multiverses are still now, but yeah. with a different history. Everything's a different history, mm. right? Interesting. It, it, it's not a different timeline. There's only now as far as time. True. Time is an illusion. The clocks are real. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like Calendars exist. Clocks exist. But time is, is is a man-made construct. Very true. You know? Very true. Um, but I, I, to your point, I think that, um, you know, essentially you, you are Adam of your own universe. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's, that's the, like the, the world does center around you. It centers around you as well. You know, like it's, this is your world. Yeah. Like, yeah, like yeah. you've been put here. Purpose is so abundant in earth yeah. because everybody finds different purposes. True. And some people even find more than one purpose. I don't have just one purpose. Yeah. Like, and the older I get, I'm like, oh my God, time's running out. I need to learn more. I need to do more. I need to, yes. you know, I, I still need to make the world a better place. Exactly. Hunger you know? for the knowledge. Yeah. So like you, you, you want to surround yourself with people that also want to make the world a better place. Exactly. You know, like yeah. that's, so like you you have to build your own garden of Eden essentially yeah, you know you're right. if if you've been cast out like all of us have you know yeah. nobody nobody can prove that they're they've been cho or they've chosen to be born you know what I mean mm -hmm. but like like what if you had been like what if you did choose to be born and what if maybe like you were sent back here like you didn't get it right you did bad yeah. you did bad stuff and you didn't do enough to make up for it exactly not not to the point to where you go down a level but to where you're just like now you gotta try again man yeah like, yeah yeah you, you haven't earned enough yeah exactly like, so like like I, I think you totally would be Adam of your own universe true, you know what true I mean? that. yeah true but it's it's up to you to determine like what your universe is going to be whenever you're you're gone. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because exactly. whatever you do now, that will be the story of you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. So, and what if our goal is to inspire the children with us and our stories, and how do we make the world a better place, and strive to be, pretend for a minute that Coulter Reigns is Nikola Tesla, or Whatever the greatest artist back in the day, Coulter Reigns is James Brown. Pretend that you are that. Pretend that John Croy is Jesus Christ. Pretend that John Croy is Martin Luther King Jr. Pretend that, well, I won't say your name, but, you know, pretend that Coulter Reigns is Martin Luther King Jr. And we've come to make the world a better place for the people that have been disenfranchised and the people that have been... Um, and then their ancestors have been made fucking slaves. Yeah. And how can we make this planet better such that we we are an example to the children on how to live an inspirational life? I totally dig that. I totally dig that. The um uh, one of the um the driving <laughs> uh, uh, ego factors, I guess, as yeah. far as like why I create, right? It's so whenever I die. I have something that shows I didn't waste my talents. Yes. I, mean, I didn't squander it. Exactly. I would much rather have something like a Van Gogh effect, minus the botched suicide attempt, <laughs> but um, I'd much rather have something to where the ripple of what I did in life, I don't experience its greatness. Yeah. I cause its greatness, and then after I'm gone, it keeps going. You know, it's a, it's a ripple. I would Beautiful. much rather have that than to actively participate and uh, relish in it because I feel that would be 
much more short lived and true, less meaningful in the grand scheme of things. True. Yeah. yeah. Like pride. Pride will get you into big trouble. Oh, totally. Pride will get you into very big trouble. In now, my world, in my in my world, where uh, I think what I'm supposed to do is anytime I do something good, you say it comes from Jesus. Anytime I fuck up and sin, it comes from John. And in that way, you don't relish in your own glory and say, oh, John's a badass. Mm. Keep yourself humble yet uh, yes. being accountable for your own uh, yeah. uh, uh, shortcomings. Yeah, exactly. I got this book called The Utmost for His Highest. And it's like, you got to do your fucking best, your absolute best. And you got to do it with all your heart, soul, and mind. Whatever it is that you love to do. Like, culture, you're fucking awesome at playing the guitar. I remember fucking rock and rolling with you Thanks, back man. in the day, dude. Yeah, you're dude. fucking man at the fucking guitar. Yeah, you were, you were one of the first uh, 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 friends I had that uh, listened to, like, just the recordings. I have just me, like, writing yeah. songs. Yeah. You and uh, Brandon uh, Anderson. Yeah. yeah. You guys were like, dude, this is really fucking good. You should keep doing this. Absolutely, you're fucking good, dude. Yeah. So, you're a fucking man, dude. Well, I appreciate that. You can be the next Jimi Hendrix. Uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but I, you, you got up. At, yeah. at this point, I don't. Yeah, I'm not sure when the story ends, right? Yeah, yeah. And I'm not sure what I'll be remembered for. So I'd rather not have tunnel vision yeah. with one particular thing. You know sure. what I mean? Yeah. I would rather like, like just like just keep working. So like that's true. So like like the podcast is great because like it's. It's it's reaching people. It's mm-hmm. allowing me to like you know like this like just have like genuine human interaction. Yeah. And and a time that we're we're encouraged to have everything be text based rhetoric online. Like, yeah. That's that's that's, that's the devil, dude. Yeah. Well, it's the pantomime of communication, right? What's the pantomime mean? Uh, it's like a puppet show, like a, a fake oh, yeah. sort of going on. Yeah. So true. like, it's we're you know sort of pulling the strings of our digital selves yeah. to try to convey personality and our minds to people yeah and for clicks or likes you know it's it's a dopamine regulator yeah like this is really like what the dopamine regulator sharing minds and experiences yeah i would i'd i'd much rather just keep doing stuff like if i'm burnt out on music for like a day i'm just like i don't feel like making beats or like you know playing yeah. the guitar or whatnot yeah then, then i don't I'll, I'll find something else to do exactly. and it's okay to have a day of rest as well yes it is but what you you, you got to give yourself something to do if you find yourself your life without purpose yeah again this purpose is so abundant here yeah you got well change your surroundings maybe yeah. change the people you're around there's a uh, a really offensive uh, billionaire uh, named Dan Pena who gives really awesome motivational speeches. Okay. Foul-mouthed, blunt to the point, and like incredibly politically incorrect. Mm-hmm. But he tells people, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Good. Wow, that's that's awesome. Yeah. You are like the dogs you lay with. Yeah. So like... Like my circle of friends, especially now in my thirties, like I'm thirty six. Yeah. Like, like I, I, I don't surround myself with folks who are, you know, on on the slide down. You know yeah, what I yeah, mean? Yeah. Like, some yeah. folks that are like climbing, like they're struggling. But like, I've got other friends of mine that they got fucking like no worries for a while. That's, you know what I mean? That's the people you need. Well, I mean, they're 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 like they're they're still there with me. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah, dude. Like they're you know. Uh, uh, as much a part of my life now as they were whenever I was uh, a much bigger fuck up <laughs> back in the day. So we all used to be much bigger fuck ups. Oh yeah, totally. totally. Like yeah, I'm surprised I'm still alive, man. The stupid decisions I made when I was a kid, and the yeah. stupid like I, I should have been in jail, I should be incarcerated, I should be burned at the stake. i have just I've done horrible things, but I, don't, I made it out alive. You know, I don't good, know how. Yeah, you know, good people do bad things. Um, I think that you know you can't get uh, you can't get wrapped up on it. You know yeah. what I mean. You gotta forget the you gotta forgive yourself. Yeah, yeah. You if you don't forgive it. yourself, you're not gonna be able to forgive anybody else. True. If you don't love yourself, you're not gonna be able to love anybody else. That's right. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And this, no matter if you're theistic or atheistic, other yeah. people beat themselves up because of their own failures, and they deal with it differently. Some of yeah. them project onto other people yeah. to make them like react so then it's not well i'm not the bad person look how poorly you're reacting you yeah know, you prodded him with a stick to get him to that level you yeah, know it's horrible but it's 
life is so awesome and it's so short that yeah, it's, it it's a much better uh, idea to surround yourself with people that want to do good. I agree. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. What if heaven is now? Heaven is right now based on your decisions on whether you act righteously or unrighteously and whether you make friends that are good friends or bad friends. Yeah, heaven is now. And if you surround yourself with people who are positive influencers and support you and you support them and you love them and they love you, <coughs> you live in heaven right now. You live in hell if you break the law and get thrown in a fucking prison and you're surrounded by a bunch of criminals and they want to try to butt fuck you or whatever they do in the prisons, I don't know. That's hell. Um, or if you surround yourself with negative thinkers, um, people who point the finger at you that you're not good enough, you, you, you know, that's hell. Yeah. You know, hell could be very real on the earth just based on your friends and the people you hang out with. Oh, totally. It um, goes what I was saying earlier that, you know, like uh, earth is essentially paradise and perdition existing simultaneously. You know what I mean? There's, What's perdition mean? Like, like hell pretty much. Yeah, okay. You, know? um, you can, uh, there are things in life you can control. Yeah. There's a lot of things you cannot control. Correct. So with the things that you can control, it's a lot um, uh, more beneficial for you to sort of uh, tilt the wheel towards a positive oh, yeah. uh, outcome. You know what I mean? Cause, Stay positive. Stay oh, yeah. positive. Because bad times are going to come. It's invariable. Like, like they're always going to happen. You don't know when, but, yeah. but life's default setting is suffer. Yeah. Like, that's like, look at nature. Nature always wins. Nature is indifferent to who you are, where yeah. you came from. Yeah. The lion will eat you no matter how good or bad a person you are. True. You know what I mean? Yeah. So... I can't control the lion's appetite, right. but you know, like the, there's there's things in my life that I I can do to try to make life more harmonious and more heavenly. Yeah, you know, absolutely. And to uh, to your point, what you're saying earlier with um, you know, making it better for you know the uh, the children. Yeah, it, it's it's a I I think our influence does trickle down like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, absolutely. Like, think about whenever, you know, we were teenagers and you look at, like, like musicians or thinkers or actors yeah. or all those folks and you're just like, like, oh, man, there's nobody of my generation who even compares with, like, these, like, old heads. Yeah. So, like, I I think that's kind of the point is that, like, you you realize sort of, like, how how you put that? Uh, epigeneticism. Uh -huh. That, like, you know, you learn more. So, like, yeah. One thing I'm happy that I, I have not had children yet is because I, my DNA is now at it, its crux. You know what I mean? It's at it's the top of the uh, uh, the food chain as far as where my mind has ever been. Yeah. Awesome. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like that's that's stored like in your genes. True. Like what you know is yeah. stored in your genes. Yeah. So, like, so now you got that fire dick, dude. Oh yeah. Like <laughs> now you're the man. You're the man. Looking, uh, looking for a, a queen that has a, of, uh, uh, you know, uh, yeah, some sort of equal value. You got to know your worth. Absolutely, right? yeah. So like, you got to be the man that's worthy of a queen. Oh yeah, I've, uh, I think I've, uh, I think I may have mentioned this on the show before. I'm not sure, but like, you get this is going to be crude in front of your uh, your lady, but um, no. yeah, you know, you get in your 30s and you really you start thinking with your balls more yeah. than your dick. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah. your, your dick is just happy to be there because he makes a commission on it, right? He's just, <laughs> he's just a mediator that's just there to facilitate the deal. Uh, but the, the, your nuts are where, like, they're like, this is a mate. We want to breed with this one. True, true. You know? Yeah, yeah. So, like, when you when you start listening more to your, your, your boys, they're yeah, thinking, yeah. like, I've... That's true, that's true. Because a woman's value is, is in her soul. It, oh, ain't, it ain't in her titties. No, no. It ain't in her titties uh -uh. or how hot she looks and stuff like that. It's it's what she's all about on the inside. Totally. Totally. Because we're all going to get ugly and die one day. Oh, know? yeah. Very soon. <laughs> very soon we're going to get ugly and die. But also you got to trust the female intuition, too, because she got the better intuition than the man. Um, there's a saying, I think it says, like, you, you don't pick the girl, the girl picks you. Mm -hmm. And she picks you. Because she knows more than you. She got the feminine. She got the feminine the, intuition. The anima. 
think it's the, the is that the word? That's I think that's the word uh, Carl Jung came up with as far as the the uh, feminine mind. Yeah, it's a, that's an all beings or whatnot. Yeah, but, I mean obviously you know females are more in touch with the they feminine are. mind than the men. Yeah, mind, yeah, so. yeah. But we got to work together as a team, and we got to use the the female's intuition, and we got to use the male. The female is the condor, and the males are the eagle. And the eagle is a badass. I'm going to kill everything and dominate. And I'm a badass. Look at me. I got the egotistical. Look at my balls. How big my dick is. I'm such a badass. I got a machete. I got a machete now, bitch. Woo! Now, look at me. But the female is smarter. She knows what's right and what's wrong. We need to start listening to women more than listening to men. Because historically, we've listened to men because they've just, they were stronger. They got the bigger dick. They used to rape women. And they, they call slavery men enslave people. I doubt women enslave people. Men enslave people. Men dominate the woman. It's time for us to shift perspectives from the masculine culture to the feminine culture and to start following the feminine culture and the Mother Earth and nurturing, nurturing over domination. I think that's been tried before. I have no evidence. This is all anecdotal. But yeah, I, yeah. I, I would think... That that has been tried before, okay. and what it what it would lead to is that when a barbarian horde gets strong enough, they don't care about your ideology, they don't care about your wisdom, mm. they care about ransacking the fucking town. Yeah. So that's normally my um, the Vikings. Yeah, yeah. The 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 Vikings, the uh, the religious hordes. Yeah. You know, uh, tribal warfare that yeah. you see in uh, America and the Africas. Yeah. As well, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. when you can exploit your competition and take their resources, yeah. history shows that that's what happens. Yeah. You know, uh, authoritarians will be able to look at compassion and be able to exploit it completely. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think things like that have, like, it would only make sense that you would have, like, at some point in history, a... Uh, a, f- a female uh, led society however i think that unless they practice isolationism like where they don't have any treaties or any alliances with anybody okay i think that invariably what would happen is that barbarian hordes and eagles of war would come in and just ransack that society completely because uh if you are able to use dominance yeah. in order to win an argument or win a victory yeah. and that's your strong suit yeah. that's what you're going to use you yeah know? yeah yeah but that's when the woman turns to her husband and says get your fucking machete out <laughs> <laughs> and that's when the men step up to protect the women yeah yeah. and that's why I gave you a machete because <laughs> we finally got a woman dominate, dominate oh, yeah. society I, I want to see Elizabeth Warren see what she can do man but we need to start. We need to start focusing on the feminine and stuff. That they, they and the Native Americans were big on that. They talked about the grandmother, the grandmother, and mm-hmm. we were talking to gra- and the Mother Earth mm-hmm. and all this stuff. And, yeah, the matriarchs. Yeah, and and that was very. And the and Native Americans tried to show the Westerners the way. They tried to show us the way, and we fucking killed them and stole their fucking gold and told them to go on the Trail of Tears over here and all this fucking bullshit. And Chief Seattle said. He said, you may not know this now, you may not realize this now, but the Great Spirit, our God, is the same God as your God the Father. He said, you you may not understand that now, but we'll go in peace. We'll go and we don't understand why God gave the white man dominion over the red man. We don't, don't, that's a mystery to us. I don't understand it, but we'll go in peace and we'll go on the trail of tears and we'll do our thing. We'll be peaceful about it, whatever. And uh, he said that, you know, hopefully, hopefully one day in the future, we'll find that we are brothers and that we're not praying to different gods, that we're praying to the same God. Um, And he said, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see in the future if we are brothers or we're not. There is something I came across with, um, and mentioned the, uh, I know bonkers, it mentioned uh, something about the 12 tribes of Israel, mm-hmm. right? And it was a, 
essentially it took, I think, I forget which tribe it was, but they talked about that, you know, in the beginning there was, you know, uh, you know, God essentially took uh, four different types of clay to oh. make man that he had brown, okay, white, red, and yellow clay. That's fascinating. And that from each type of clay, yeah. there was three races oh. that were divvied up for each one. Wow. And that um, over time, uh, all, all of these, uh, these lies sort of came about. So, like, for instance, like Caucasians were actually dark-skinned people. Oh. And Mongols were actually white-skinned people. Okay. There was this um, old nation um, supposedly called Tartaria or Tartar. Okay. Tartar sauce. <laughs> yeah. No, I love tartar sauce. But... It's spelled the same way, though, but okay. it went from uh, essentially the end of Europe, like where Russia is today, okay. all the way to the east coast of America. Okay. So massive, multi-continent nation that yeah. was consisted of nomadic peoples yeah. that had, like, they were all autonomous, but that the... Um, you had, as far as from uh, the uh, the brown clay, you would have Africans, mm -hmm. Polynesians, and Caucasians. Okay. Because they came from the Caucasus Mountains. Oh, interesting. They're, and uh, Africans obviously came from the African Plain. Polynesians came from <laughs> the South Pacific. Wow. And from the whites, you had uh, the Europeans, uh -huh. the Jews, and the Vikings, the Nords, okay, and like the Vikings and Nords were also the Mongols. Yeah, so they were they were these these large white men. Yeah, the, way the Africans were Big the muscles. large brown men. We gotta right? rape everybody and burn their shit. But I mean, like this, like some like this, like these uh, these these old you know uh, tales and old religions. Yeah, like I I think there's more truth to them than yeah. what we have been told. You know, yeah. twelve twelve tribes also. That twelve disciples, twelve houses of the zodiac. Like oh, like, that's fascinating. Like all of these things are connected. So like going back to astrotheology, like the sun, mm -hmm. Jesus, yeah. as in the name of our sun, 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 and, and the twelve houses of the zodiac, wow. the twelve disciples. Um, they also tie in that Jesus dying on the cross is Jesus dying on the southern cross when the sun is at the winter solstice. Oh, it's there for three days Ooh. and then rises again. Okay. To uh, make its trek back up north, presumably. That, that is interesting. True north. Yeah. That's fascinating. Wow. Yeah, yeah. There's some there's some interesting symbolism as well. Yeah, the number 12 and the Tesla 369. Yeah. All divisible by three. Yeah. And three. seven being a name, uh, or excuse me, a, a, a number of uh, divinity. Prime you know. number two, I think. Yeah. Prime numbers are important. Hey, you want to know what God is? Well... That's a rather frightening question to have to answer. God, check this out. <laughs> check this out, motherfucker. God. I'll listen, to answer your question, I'll listen to your perspective as far as what God is. But when somebody asks you, but, do you want to know what God is, they can just pull out a fucking gun and be like, well, let's find out. No, thanks. Oh, so, what? What? <laughs> pull out a gun? <laughs> yeah. Some guy, some guy told my dad, he was a wise man, a wise black man. He's like, D, everybody want to go to heaven, but nobody want to die. What's that about? <laughs> it's true, though. Yeah, it's funny as shit, man. Mm -hmm. But maybe you got to fulfill your purpose on the planet, and then you get to die. And then you get to go home. But maybe. you got to fulfill your purpose first. <laughs> maybe. Like, that's something that um, I can find common ground with people that believe in the uh, simulation theory, or like the computer program theory. Right? Oh, yeah. Well, because, like, either way, you have to have a programmer. Right, intelligent design or yeah. the matrix. You have a, a a programmer. You have great spirit. You know, yeah, God yeah, the creator. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. So, I wonder that like somehow your life has been set to these series of conditionals to where if you survive, right? Yeah. I mean, so like if you decide to like hop the fence at the zoo in the tiger cage or whatnot, your programming is going to be determined then on. A man inside of the tiger cage, oh, not yeah, necessarily yeah. like your life path as you had chosen to. Yeah, like, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. But like, so if you if you survive long enough, then eventually, I think you would have to have some sort of if then else statement that would be like, "All right, you've maxed out your uh, character, so now you're in a different category where your purpose has been fulfilled. Yeah. You're now expendable to yeah. life." Yeah. 
Oh, that's a good. That's good. That's so, interesting. Yeah. That's so interesting. It, it yeah. would be like you're being called. You know what I yeah. mean? Quote unquote. Yeah, 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 but yeah. like not to the point to where it's predetermined. You know what I mean? It's still your life. You chose everything that you've chosen. Yeah. You, you chose that. You that's true. I mean? He gave you free will. Yeah. He gave you free will. There's, uh, there's a good philosophical argument I came across as far as uh, uh, it was like uh, uh, prove free will or something like that okay. or argue free will yeah. versus um, you know uh, everything being predetermined. And it was uh, that uh, uh, evil existing in the world is an example of free will as far as like you would not choose for great evils to happen to you you know mm. nobody is that masochistic you know what i mean yeah it's just sometimes evil chooses you and you're a victim and, yeah you know. that's true that's very true some guy in the in the crazy crisis center the anti-suicide center he was like he was like god and satan work as a team they work as a team to teach us lessons i guess well, if, if you, you make an unrighteous decision and decide to live your life poorly and want to decide to use the Millennium Falcon to smuggle drugs, you may be going to get thrown in hell, a.k.a. the prison. Right. And so you're going to get butt-fucked in prison by Satan because you made the wrong decision. But maybe if we all make right decisions, uh, maybe we can get rid of Satan and he can become non- non-existent. I don't know. I don't think it's. I don't think it ever will. I think um, there, this idea of numbers, right? I think would tie in yeah. with with this as well. If uh, if it starts with one, right? Um, one is only <laughs> but um, the monad. The monad is the godhead. What's monad? Monad uh, uh, comes from um, uh, mono, as in like yeah. monosyllabic mo- oh, okay. mono. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's just one. The right? infinite. It, it's um, it would be the uh, the the creator mm-hmm. itself. Mm-hmm. But if there's God, the creator, mm-hmm. well, God wouldn't be able to manage everything, right? You'd you'd have to have some managers there for you. Okay. So the um, I think it's in uh, Bhagavad Gita. Am I saying that right? It's a oh. Hindu text. Okay. Right okay. Now? But then you have the dyad, the yin and yang, two okay. two uh, layers of it's still God, but it's yeah. two different persons. It's the balance, right? Then you would have the triad of oh. three, okay, and then uh, the tetrad of of four, okay, and it keeps splitting down, yeah, into uh, these layers or altars of, of heaven that are described in the Bible. Interesting. Uh, as far as like like oh I saw all of the heavens and the heavens upon the heavens yeah, okay so it's this idea of a pyramid again right ah. so like at the top of the pyramid yeah. is is oneness right, right. Yeah, yeah and but then again you have all this other stuff the like, point of maximal potential energy yeah yeah at and the I, top of the goal pyramid I think the um, for us down here on Earth we can perceive uh, the heavenly bodies right so we see. Uh, we can see like seven spheres with the naked eye. Um, I guess nine if you include uh, Neptune and Uranus. Okay. Um, but uh, you've got you know the Sun, the Moon, yeah. Mercury, Venus, Mars, Saturn, and Jupiter. Yeah. And like, I would I would think that I'm starting to get lost in the woods. We're thinking here. Um, <laughs> That's okay. But it happens. The, uh, the closest we could get to, like, understanding as far as, like, these demigod layers would be the houses of the Zodiac. Oh. Like, the, the stars that we see up in the sky, I mean, essentially, those are lesser gods. You know what I mean? Oh, they yeah. wouldn't be as powerful as, like, the, the sun, Jesus, the right. most, which is the most powerful thing right. in our sky. Right. right. Yep. So, like, it's... They say the stars are angels. Someone told me the stars are supposedly angels. Yeah, so I, I would argue that this uh, concept of like angels, mm-hmm. uh, demons, lesser beings, they're yeah. they're essentially demigods, right? They're aliens. They, What's they, a demigod? Demigod, it's like a lesser god. Okay. Right? Yeah, so, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, something that is uh, kind of like what we were talking about before with dimensional beings. It's like, well, they're higher dimensional. So yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're above and beyond biology. So to us, they are they are godlike, but right. they're not they're not gods themselves. Right, right. Okay, okay. You know what I mean? Maybe maybe we're all demigods. I mean, I think to a certain degree we are, right? Because like we're we're 
we're divine consciousness experiencing itself subjectively, but this vehicle we're in is just a meat vehicle. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. Like this this isn't really me. It's not either exactly. of you as well. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like, we're eternal. Yeah. Your spirit is eternal. Yeah, this is only, uh, you know... Uh, I'm going to hang out with you in heaven in the infinite universe energy, and we're going to fucking rock and roll. Oh, hell yeah. Like it's the fucking end times. Oh, yeah, man. There's, um, you know, our bodies are a... Uh, it's a trinity. We have ourselves, I should say. Ourselves are a trinity. Mind, body, and spirit. Oh, interesting. Right? The, uh, the first time I took uh, mushrooms and took too many of them, Yeah. Um, this was... This was a few years later after uh, the first time I had them, but um, I was probably like 23 or so, maybe mm-hmm. 24. Mm-hmm. But I l- left my body, yep. and I could... I'm on the couch. I can see on the couch, and yet I see myself on the couch. Yep. And I see myself, the dream I'm having as yep. well, yep. and it's experiencing the dream, yep. and experiencing myself... In the void, objectively, sort of viewing it all. Yeah. And, like, so odd being able to see out of three sets of eyes that are all me. Yeah. And from a third person as well. Like, I, I had, like, again, I took too many mushrooms and whenever I <laughs> peaked, I was... I was by myself in a room, just calm, just listening to like Pink Floyd, you know. Yeah, rock and roll, Pink yeah. Floyd, man. And I think it was, I think uh, maybe Modest Mouse as well, but like stuff that was just like ethereal yeah. and just sort of like yeah. take me there. Yeah. And I went somewhere, and like I remember just feeling nothing but intense love. Yes. And and like no panic of death, and no panic that like like I had died, even though like I was like, but I'm not dead. And they're like, yeah, but here you're dead right now yeah you're on the couch alive but here you're dead interesting yeah grateful dead and the uh the next time i tripped i tried to mimic that feeling as well yeah because i was like i want to go back and then i didn't have anything pleasant it was like oh no you actually have died and i thought i had died <laughs> 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 and, um, i was just laying there on the couch just like oh, oh my God. shit like they're gonna find me and they're gonna know that I'm dead from drugs. And, <laughs> and my mom's going to be so pissed. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just, oh. like, I'm just like, oh my God, that's it. Like, I, I took too much. I took too much. And then a song yeah. would change. I'd be like, <gasps> what? Oh my God, I was fucking dead. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. I, yeah, I remember the first time I did mushrooms too. I was like, it was just like a um, surreal experience. And I was like, I fucking get it now. Yeah. I understand. Everything now makes sense to me. When you're when you're you're tapped into like all like all life. Yeah. Like everything. Yeah. Like L S D will put me in outer space. Mushrooms will bury me in the earth, if that makes sense. Like I Interesting. feel just like, yeah. Like Yeah, no, I agree with that. I agree with that. Mushrooms is it's yeah, it kinda can make you feel a sick feeling a little bit, a little bit drowsy. Mm-hmm. Make it uh and LSD is just nothing but hallucinogens, and you're just like, I'm still awake, and I'm riding river rock and roll, and I'm like, I can see the universe, and they're ah, shooting laser beams down. I, yeah. I love LSD, man. Yeah. But I love mushrooms, too. But uh, I, I always tell people, I was like, if you can do anything, yeah. before you even have a cup of coffee, yeah. say you've, like, you've never tried any drug like at all, yeah. don't try drugs, just try mushrooms. Just even like friends of mine that are straight edge, I'm like, I'm like, I'm not, rec- I would never recommend you to try drugs. But mushrooms are not a drug. They're here for us. It's like, plant medicine. Yeah. It's plant medicine. It ain't a drug. Yeah. It come from God. It come from Mother Earth. He put it here for you. Yeah. Use I, it. Yeah. I, I agree completely. And the fact that it's not only demonized, but like, like now you can like, you know, go to fucking jail for like yeah. ha- having something that is here for us like the, I think that's spitting in God's face the laws it's blasphemy is what I it's think it blasphemy. is yes it is it's the laws say that God you have fucked up the law is control substances about hey this mushroom is you you can't eat this mushroom a San Pedro cactus you can't eat that shit you can't yeah. eat the morning glory seeds you can't eat the uh, we even air got like cause um, that's LSD like they, they just look at uh so I, was that a mold? Ergot's technically a mold, but still, it's readily available in nature. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, yeah, all the all these things can be found in nature. Yeah, if it grow, if it grow on the earth, 
let it be. And if you're going to make a man's law that says that's bad, you're spitting in God's face. I don't think God liked that at all. He put that there for you. Yep. He put it for you. If it's if it's here, if it's on this planet, if it's on this planet, God put it here for you. God put guitars there on this planet so Colter Reigns could play the motherfucking guitar like a fucking god. Dude, I was thinking about uh, was thinking about that not too long ago about like the first guy that like made a guitar. Like what kind of genius yeah. like, that dude was. You know what I mean? And the resonant frequencies and stuff and the shape of the guitar, the geometric shape and how to resonate out mm-hmm. the cavity. Very fascinating. Yeah. And the and also the shapes, even in the Islamic culture, um, even the Catholic culture. Um, with the shapes of the churches and the cathedrals and the way that the sounds resonated inside of the buildings. Absolutely. And the organs and the geometric shapes and the resonance that was inherent to the worship. The resonance that was inherent to the worship. Very important. Well, if, yeah. you, if you think about it, like um, speaking of these uh, cathedrals and yeah. whatnot, so the, the layout of some of these guys is... Um, you know they have a they have things like bronze like very meticulously like laid out like oh. a certain way so it'll go directly to the pipes and it'll cause everything to yeah. reverberate yeah. and echo in just uh, the perfect way yeah um, uh, the design of some of these uh, cathedral halls is like that of a dynamic microphone so like like this mic that we're using yeah. I have to use 48 volts it's called phantom power okay. that's used to to power the microphone. Okay. With the dynamic microphone, you need you don't need that at all. You just wow. plug it in and it is ready to go. It'll take acoustic energy, convert it to magnetic energy and convert it to electrical energy and send it right into the computer. That is fascinating. Yeah. So like some of these old cathedrals where they'll have spaces where they designed it for like Humans stand here, voice go everywhere. Yeah. Like, it's it's sacred geometry yes. in action. Yeah. Like I love the idea of sacred geometry. Mm-hmm. And also, electromagnetics, when it comes in, I went to uh, Indian Springs Baptist Church. Once I had one of my, my, my crazy visions. And interestingly enough, there was no metal in the church. There were no nails. They used a thing that's called a dowel. Dowel. Wooden. Basically wooden nails. My, my dad's built uh, cabinets before with, with no nails. Recently, yeah. Where I'm like, how the fuck did you do this, dude? <laughs> and it's all natural. It's got no metal. And it makes me wonder about the relationship between <coughs> God and electromagnetism. Mm. And you go in these churches, and there's no metal in the church. There was no nails. And the stained glass, the stained glass and the way it refracts the light, the refractivity of the light. And Jesus, what did he say? I am the way, the truth. Did he say the light? Or is it life? Light. 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 That's fascinating. And the halo, and the halo, I think back in the day... We live in less polluted environments. People live in it for 900, 700 years old, what the fuck ever. Yeah, yeah. The tale of like uh, like kings that l- lived a legit like thousand years. Yeah. Or something like that. Yeah. They live in a less polluted environment, and maybe their eyeballs were better uh, adapted to see other electromagnetic frequencies. Mm. So you can see the man's soul. You can see the man's soul, and he, he has a halo about him. And I've met people, they, 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 uh, they have the powers of synesthesia. Synesthesia. Yeah, yeah, you can, yeah. Yeah, you familiar with that? Yeah, I see um, I see colors with my numbers and my words. You do? Else, yeah. You do? That's fascinating. And fours are purple and green. It's, uh, four is one of my favorite numbers because purple and green are like my favorite uh, color That's fucking combo. awesome, dude. That's a uh, gift from God. Mm-hmm. That You an angel now. That makes you special. Uh, there, there's just been... I've always been like a creative, right? Like, yeah. I, I was just raised that way, but yeah, like... Yeah, create, dude. Create. But, uh, it's just something. Some people are better at it than uh, than yeah. I am, but it's just there'll be ideas that they're not my ideas. Yeah, I just I see the idea. Yeah, and it's like how can I make this idea like come to life? Yeah, come to life. But um, no, like uh, like uh, yeah, I'll, I'll see uh, colors and visions with uh, my music without psychedelia or anything beautiful. like That's that. Beautiful um, letters and words. If I start to concentrate too heavily on how a letter is designed, like it's font art or something. Okay, okay. I, I won't even see a word anymore. And like, it'll, 
Oh. It'll kind of fuck me up because like it'll put me in this spot where my brain is technically dumb. Yeah. Because I'm like I'm like, what 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 word mean? You know? What yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah yeah yeah. I'm no longer looking at it like I'm reading. You get obsessed with symbolism. Yeah. So like, I'm familiar with that. So I think to your point as far as like being able to see auras and halos about people, um, I heard something about uh, they did a study or somebody did a study with. Uh, uh, how uh, poor our eyesight has become due to reading. And <laughs> the, the irony of us becoming more intelligent from reading and from writing and being able to share ideas more than the oral tradition and that like like completely changing the world over the printing press, right? That's fascinating. But that it has permanently fatigued our eyes to where we are adapted now to read and not necessarily see. Whoa, that's fucking deep, dude. It's like what they said on that movie with President Camacho. Readings for fags, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> we try to read that word, you a fag boy? Man, that's crazy as shit. Well, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, you're right, though. And then people, like, especially these uh, people from, like, Japan and China who are just like, you better study, 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 study your ass off. And those people have ri- uh, vision problems and stuff, and they get eyeglasses because they're squinting all the time looking at the computer. Right. And then we make the filters to make sure you... We just spend too much time on the fucking computer reading all this fucking bullshit. I, I, I'll try to... I'll try to tell, like, some of my friends that I don't know, so they're just, like, they're just steady on their phone, like... Oh, that's horrible. And, well, like, if it's just me, like, at the house by myself, I get it, like, because, like, yeah. like, I work from home currently, Yeah. so, like, if I'm downtime and I'm bored, it's just like, well, like, shit, I'll, like, it's just instinct, I'll check yeah. the phone, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, I'll hang out with friends sometimes, and they'll just, like, while I'm hanging out with them, they're just on their phone, I'm like, hey, bro, can we, like... Be <laughs> yeah, like, that's like insulting. Hang out. That's I, insulting. It, it is, but I don't want to. Uh, I feel like I would be insulting them yeah. by me saying like, "Hey, yeah. bro, don't you hang out with me?" Yeah, Do you're right. Do, you're you doing know? right. You're doing the right thing. But it's um, it, it's not healthy. If you're gonna be no, it's not. If you're gonna be doing something with a screen, then like I mean, be doing something with it. You know what yeah. I mean? Like. Like, write a program, build a song. Yes. Yeah. Use your phone. Don't let your phone use you. Yeah. A lot of people let their phones use them. They get sucked into it. And they get too involved. Of, oh, did someone like my post? They didn't like my post. I got to write. To, and they get they get all upset about it instead of just not giving a fuck. They're yeah. living their life. It's, it's, it's weird, though. Like, people have become so... Um, Reliant on these avatars that they've made of themselves, you know what I mean? Oh yeah. And then where it becomes like, well, I, I, I have to, I have to, I have to update this online, like, because <laughs> like, like otherwise the uh, the story stops, right? Yeah. And then people won't care about me anymore. You yeah. Know? Like people aren't going to care about me if I. The truth is, probably out. no one cares about you at all. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're the only one that gives a shit about your Facebook profile. Yeah. Most other people are ignoring the shit out of you. For the most part, I post, yeah. I post some crazy shit on the internet, man, and, and my mom's like, my mom's like, this is crazy stuff. Oh, you crazy. Oh. I enjoy and your post because it's so you. odd. Thank and you. I was like, like, hey, man, he's passionate. He has somebody he believes in, and it's not ordinary. I like all of those things. Thank you, you know sir. What I, mean? I appreciate like, that. And I appreciate your artistic value as well. Thanks, and dude. I know we disagree on the politics, but that don't matter because we're brothers. Yeah, well, it's fu- we got to break out of this mindset of left right. I, I fucking hate it, man. Like, I hate I've, it too. I've got, I've got. Um, they they both been on the podcast, but um, yeah. my my friend uh, uh, Ansley Stubbs, uh-huh. she's a uh, 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 very progressive and left wing. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I don't agree with her on like, I'd say like. At least two of her four punted squares, maybe a third one as well. Okay, okay. And uh, my buddy Michael Price, who's uh, very like he's he's a MAGA man, like, yeah. like pro Trump all the way. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. About two or maybe three of his punted squares, I don't agree with. Yeah. Those cats are welcome on my show anytime they want. I agree. Because they have never judged me yep. for having any of my wacky beliefs. Yeah. They 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 have um uh, never tried to um make me feel less than yeah like they have been my friends when i didn't have a friend to turn to and they didn't have to amen you know what i mean yeah dude. so like, i remember people that are kind to me when yeah. they don't have to be yeah so like 
And and like I, I've heard people bitch about like like both of them because they're both strong personalities. And yeah. Fuck you. I don't give a damn. They're welcome on my show whenever they want to come on. Yeah. And dude. whenever I want to have them on. Yeah. You know, like I enjoy their perspective. That's wonderful. So I say invite, invite the alternative perspective. You know, invite. I don't like Donald Trump. I don't like his. Well, I don't say I don't like Donald Trump, but I don't like his leadership style. No, but I'd I love like, to have a conversation with him I because like his, I might learn something from him. Yeah, I don't like his personality, but uh, I would totally sit down with the U.S. president to be able to, like, just like two minutes, just be like, if I have two minutes to sit down with any U.S. president, I'm fucking taking it. Yeah, dude. I don't care who they are. Exactly. I, I, I will figure out, like, okay, what do I want to put a thought in their ear, like, or just in their mind? Like, yeah. I don't want to change anybody's opinion. And even with this show, I don't want to change anybody's opinion. Yeah. I want to change your mind. Beautiful. I want to change the way you think. I love it. And you change your own opinion. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I don't want to push you in a certain way. I'm going to, te- I'm going to tell people what I believe in. Yeah. And, and that's, that's fine. I don't yeah. expect a lot of people to agree with my beliefs. That's fine. Yeah. Because, again, no... You're no a free people. spirit. Yeah, man. You're a free spirit, man. Yeah. I, I encourage other people to be a free spirit as well. I agree, and I support you on your, that, that mission. Hell yeah. I like talking to people who, who disagree with me because I learn something from those people quite often times. Yeah. I mean, they're not your enemy. They're your friend. They can teach you something. Maybe you can teach them something. Maybe not. But you can learn something from everybody. You that's, know, you can learn from an eight-year-old child. You can learn from someone who's a crazy Nazi. Crazy not Like, I like watching videos like on Vice TV where this guy was this black guy and filtrated the Nazi, Nazi camp or something and mm-hmm. converted them to not be Nazis and stuff like that. Just fascinating stuff. So... I say learn from every source of information that's available out there. Yeah. Um, yeah why would you assume that you already know something? You know what I mean? We don't know anything. The more I learn, I re- the more I realize what a fucking idiot I am. <laughs> that's, that's, what, well, that's what makes you a wise man. That's what makes you a very wise I, man. I told, that's why There's I, so much knowledge out there that it's just like, you can never know it all. You can never know no. it all. I'm such an ignorant man. I am an ignorant man. And if you bow to that and bow to your own ignorance, and I'm a humble, ignorant man, then God will bless you with more wisdom, I believe. I could be wrong. No, I, I agree with that. I think you still have to do something with that level of insight, though, right? True. you got to like, work the righteousness. Yeah, because if all you do is just say that just like... I, I don't agree with the uh, the Calvinist perspective, where it's just like... Um, everything's predetermined already. So it doesn't matter what I do because God has already figured it out and everything is predetermined by God. It's all God's providence. I don't like that either. No, I I think that's a bullshit excuse for an ideology. It's just sort of like, like, uh, well, no accountability. It's like, so you're telling me that there's no circumstance that like... Like, God chose for this man to murder his whole fucking family, yeah. and, like, th- that's A-OK because you get to sit here in this chair and proclaim that it's God's will that you get to have a nice life yeah. and do nothing. That, yeah. I-, I think that's horseshit. I think that's uh, spiritual balderdash, you know? Like, I agree. I agree. You, if, if, if you're given insight from the divine and whether you are shown something— I've known people that on psychedelics, they were shown something— Horrific, not beautiful, but like Ooh. horrific, and they Ooh. were like, maybe I should make some life changes. Well, and, good, and they did. You know good. what I mean? So, yeah. But like, you you have to do something. I agree. Yeah. You know? What was the? There was a parable where I think the guy had like three sons or three workers, and he gave them all like gold, and then one of them buried it because he didn't he didn't want to lose the gold. I think it was Jesus. Jesus gave him. He gave him two coins, two coins, and one coin. I think I think it was I don't think it was uh, Jesus who gave oh. it. I think it was just he who told the story. But, oh, okay. Uh, the one who buried the money, and then when the time came to like, you know, what'd you do with the money? He was just like, oh, well, I, I, I buried it so I wouldn't do anything. Yeah. Like, they were like, like, why would you do that? Yes, like, exactly. Like the other two uh, uh, might have succeeded and failed, but they did something thing with yeah. their talents you yeah. know they did some of what they were given and he took the one coin and gave it to the guy who multiplied the profits yeah he gave it to the other guy he said fuck you give it to the other guy yeah the i believe the story behind that is um god gave you skills and talents and passion and you are to use that to make the world a better place and if you don't he's going to take your skills and talent he's going to take your skills and talent yeah so you better Use the tools that God gave you 
to multiply to multiply. So, and I think a lot of uh, traditional evangelical Christians have missed the point and lost the way because they say, oh, everything's meant to be this way. They sit and they watch their fucking TV all day. Everything's meant to be this way. God will provide. Everything's fine. I don't have to use my brain. I don't have to use my brain. All I have to do is believe, and everything's going to be okay. God gave you a brain for a reason, and he expects you to use that brain. Yeah, not subject yourself to dogmatic thinking. Yeah. Like, I I think that's that's one of the big things that uh, pushed me away. I, I... I always listened to atheists. I was never an atheist, though. Like, yeah, yeah. I think even at my darkest moment, was just agnostic. You yeah, know me I mean? too. Me too. I was agnostic for a long time. But it was, and it wasn't because I was indoctrinated with the religion. It's just because, like, like I just, you just feel God. Like at least yeah. with me, like, like, like again, like with the ether. You know, yeah. like I would argue that that's you know the Holy Spirit. We're all tied. Yeah. We're tethered to it. You exactly. Know what I mean? Exactly. And and to each other. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So like there there's so much truth in all of these like you know religions that yeah I, I think the and maybe that's a an illusion for the story of the Tower of Babel when they're like uh, oh they're all given different tongues well what if, what if tongues isn't like literal language but it's these different stories these different mythologies oh interesting and like the the fact that it's different languages is just coincidental you know <laughs> but it's it's a way to make people tribalistic ah. when you know like back in the day everybody just worshiped the sun you know yeah because like, yeah. again like the sun was the the it's the provider the, of all life it's, s-u-n s-o-n yeah s-u-n s-o-n yeah the um uh i don't know what uh you guys got uh planned for later but if uh you know you guys are more welcome to chill we can uh we, can, yeah. we can watch some uh, astro uh, theology stuff and, i'm down for it oh yeah i might have to take a piss though man i've been oh dude dude minutes. we could totally take a piss break now because i have been like so that shit in. So, yeah, take a piss break all we right. gotta take a piss break all right. Right. i love talking to people and hanging out dude it is that's what it's all fucking about and people don't realize it's, it's called fellowship the christians call it fellowship other people call it shooting the shit yeah but that's what it's all about yeah well you know 2020 and everything kind of I you know started uh, this before you know, the the lockdowns and you know yeah. the, the COVID crisis and all of that but um, once once that did start happening and I, I took like two months off and then I uh, it made, it made me really want to talk to people again because like it's like fuck man like we do not need to just like stay shut in and talking online with people right you know like I thought like I need a new screen it makes you go crazy yeah that's why we got so many people going crazy I I agree with that mm-hmm. and we were meant to communicate with our brothers and yeah our sisters. well and and like be able to go outside and be oh, able yeah. to like work like. Like I, I see like some of these, some of these states. I know it's mostly left up to the uh, the governors and how they chose to run it. But man, I uh, I was never a fan of uh, Georgia's governor, uh, but I like the way how he's handled uh, the COVID crisis. Like okay. he's, like I mean, shit, dude. Like folks are uh, are at least like so far. Like our state opened up. I think like one of the earliest ones. I think it was second after Florida, maybe. I mean, Flor- Florida man is going to do whatever Florida man wants to do. <laughs> That's one of the redeeming aspects of Florida. But um, like, I'm, I'm glad to be living in the buckle of the Bible Belt just because you've got so many people that are just like, hey, man, we're all going to die. Like, let, <laughs> let, let, let us fucking work. Let us open up yeah. our, our businesses, you yeah. know. Yeah. Like, in, like California and some other places, you, uh, like you can't even like, uh, open up your salon. You know what I mean? Like, if if you're a cosmetologist, yeah, like, well, you're not allowed to open uh, restaurants. Some restaurants they just had to like, you know, cut like three quarters of their staff. Like, oh wow, like that's I don't I don't like that kind of stuff, man. Like, like these forced lockdowns is it's it's um it's bad news. But I was gonna say, 
I agree. I, I agree in that I very much value autonomy. Autonomy. I don't like being told what to do. Fuck no. I don't like the government telling me what to do. I don't like the government telling anybody what to do. I don't either. I don't either. I like God telling me what to do. Yeah. And fuck what you got to tell me what to do, motherfucker. The um, I was talking with a um, not not friends with uh, a lot of a uh, lot of Marxists because I think that I think the ideology is poisonous. Okay. Um, but I was a uh, talking with a uh, arguably a buddy of mine. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Really, really uh, 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 talented musician. Really smart guy and. Just in in the culture wars, he found himself hard left, and mm. I was I was talking with him, and I was like, you know what, man, I I, I don't I, I really I really don't care for the um uh the the Marxist ideology, but at the same time, it's like my my problem with things like communism isn't like anarcho communists where there's just like y'all y'all want to have your your community, you get some land together, you guys all fuck each other's wives and husbands and smoke weed and grow your own food and okay. like like all that all that stuff. Okay. So, like fine, that's how you want to live your life totally. Okay. The problem with like something like ideas like communism or socialism on a national level is that it just opens the doors for authoritarians to come in and just Swoop, swoop uh, into your oh, organization, yeah. and then they're in control now. Yeah. And now they're the upper echelon. Yeah, you you got rid of the bourgeoisie, but you didn't get rid of all the bourgeoisie. Yeah, yeah. There's folks waiting in the shadows, and they know how to play this chess move. Yeah, yeah. But you you look at uh, you know the uh, the revolution that happened in Russia in 1917, uh -huh. and you look what happened after uh, they took control uh, uh, away from the czar, and they. Uh, the folks that wanted to give the power back to the people, yeah. then got, all of them got fucking shot because, well, rather than give it back to the people, we can show that we're even more dedicated to the cause and oh. say that you guys are actually traitors. Oh, that I, the key is the middle way. I you want to keep, that, yeah. You want to keep the way. car on the road. Yeah, you know, you 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 then straight and narrow, straight and narrow. You need to invite all ideas. Invite all ideas. Republicans got great ideas. Democrats got great ideas too. But Democrats got bad ideas. Republicans got bad ideas too. Yeah. We need to throw out the bad ideas on both sides and keep the good ideas from both sides. Yeah. And the way that you defeat bad ideas is with a better idea, you know? Like, not with the idea of, like, well, shut them out of the conversation. Absolutely. Censor them. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, that's, that's, that's the fucking truth, brother. Yeah. That is the fucking truth. We got so much mudslinging. Mudslinging come from Satan, dude. Mudslinging and talking shit about your political opponent and about their past is bullshit. Yeah. Forget the past. Tell me why your idea is better than his idea. Don't tell me why, oh, he supported busing back in 1972, which makes him a piece of shit, which by default makes me awesome as shit. <laughs> that ain't that ain't how logic works. That ain't how logic works. That ain't how Socrates would do it. No, Tell that, me your idea and why your idea is better than my idea for the future. Yeah. What's your policy? Yeah. That, that's yeah policy. That, that's been one of my biggest gripes with folks that um that uh, dislike the orange asshole has been like, okay, yeah, I get he's a douchebag. Yeah. I get he's divisive, but. Let's talk about the policies done. Like, Fair. If, yeah, and, true, and like fair. when you start bringing up some stuff where it's like, well, I mean, he has the first openly gay cabinet member in the U.S. He started a, um, a campaign of five diplomats, all openly gay men, to go abroad to other nations yeah. to uh, decriminalize homosexuality in yeah. their nations. Like, yeah, the First Step Act and prison reform and the Second uh, Chance Act, like, these things are all progressively awesome ideas yeah you know and when you when you paint yourself in a corner to this orange man bad then you don't recognize truth true yeah you know? and true. when you do the same thing on the other end when you paint yourself in a corner with orange man good very and true you're, and you're not able to look at the wickedness every politician's a fucking criminal they're probably most of them are cia assets that would be my guess yeah. right like you don't make it as far they're in bought. Life. They're bought. Yeah, by somebody. They're bought. You buy politicians mm -hmm. nowadays. They work for somebody else. They work for their donors or whoever else. Well, what's interesting is that um, you know, with with Trump and AOC and Dan Crenshaw and like other 
uh, folks that are politicians, yeah. they they are now bringing celebritism or celebrity status into politics. Interesting, right? So like Jimmy Carter, like was he a movie star. Well, I would say Barack Obama or was Ronald Reagan, arguably the first celebrity president. Yeah, right. Yeah, Donald Trump is the result of what happens when you have a celebrity president and you get a real celebrity president. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But like, it's like, it's scary. Like it's all the political theater is so deeply entrenched that they are preparing for America in the 22nd century. We're not going to be here for it, obviously. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But like, this is like where they're looking at now is like, well, where does America want to be in the 22nd century? Mm. And the way to do that is like, the internet's now a thing, right? The floodgates are open. Yeah. So I love the internet, man. Free flow of information. Yeah, fantastic. I love the internet. It was put here from, from God. God put us the internet. <laughs> he put the internet here so me, he, me and you can have this conversation about how corrupt the political process is. I don't know if the Citizens United was what did this or whatever, but now it's the corporatocracy. The corporatocracy runs America. Have you read it? I got this fantastic book. Um, it's called Confessions of an Economic Hitman by uh, just the title John, alone just yeah. uh, uh, sets my philosophical libido. John fire. Perkins, <laughs> John, yeah, yeah, it, it is fascinating. John Perkins, a fantastic man, but he um, started off. He volunteered for the Peace Corps, and uh, long story short, basically got basically got fucking uh, wrapped up in working for the CIA unknowingly. In a way, the CIA, because he liked to have sex with chicks, like every man does. And the CIA took, um, it's hard to hit this and and talk. Someone else talk, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I got my priority in front of my face, baby. I gotta, the, um... I gotta hit this, baby. <laughs> and shut my mouth. So, take that, lungs. Take that fucking lungs, burning hell, motherfucker. All right, there you go, babe. Now, he uh, he started off working for the Peace Corps and ended up working for a uh, company called uh, Bechtel. Bechtel. Bechtel Corporation. It was a uh, big-time uh, contracting company, um, and they got mad government contracts. Mad government contracts. And he would go all throughout the world... And uh, his job working for Bechtel, which was associated with the CIA, but like not not really like behind the scenes associated with the CIA. Bechtel was the front group. Bechtel, they went throughout the world, and uh, they would go to these countries that were developing nations. Like he was part of the Panama Canal <laughs> building that shit, and he went to fucking. Um, the Middle East, I forget the country, Iraq, Iran, Saudi Arabia, something like that. But he says in his book, he says in his book, and, is very, and he advocates strongly for the uh, Native American prophecy of the eagle returning to the condor, which is, which is a very interesting prophecy, which I think is also compatible with the Bible prophecy. But what, is that, what is that prophecy? The prophecy is that the eagle, the masculine, will come to dominate the feminine and will drive the feminine out. The feminine is represented by the condor. Um, and the eagle will dominate. The eagle will dominate and drive her out. And there will be a period of great suffering on the earth. But only when the eagle, a.k.a. the mas masculine, returns to the condor, a.k.a. the feminine, will the spirit of peace be upon the earth? What's a coado? What? Um, I believe that's the same... Uh, I forget if it's Mayan or Aztec, but um, it's a, it, was it's a, Aztec. It's, it, was a, it was a serpent god yeah. that was a god of peace. Mm. Um, and... Uh, Quetzalcoatl. Uh, I've heard um, that name before. I have. It's a it's a, a flying a serpent god that is also associated with fire, but like a fucking like, dragon, dude. Yeah, but yeah, it's like, but it's like green fire. Like it's it's like a, like I got a, a dragon on my class ring. 
Do you? Fuck yeah. <laughs> Animal Leo. Animal Leo, and I got the emerald, the fucking firestone in the middle. Mm. About off the wild cat, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I got a coincidence with the Native Americans in Cherokee. I met a boy up there. His name was Wildcat, too. I got a coincidence with him. His name was Wildcat? That's His cool. Was fucking wildcat, baby. Yeah. Anyway, I'm sorry. You go ahead, sir. I don't mean to interrupt. Oh, no, no, no. It's just, I think it's just fascinating. Again, like, at, at some point, there. I would imagine there was there was great truth, right? Yeah. Oh, and, yeah. And then, you know, truth splinters somehow, yeah. right? And you get um, you get further from God mm. when you get further from truth. Yes. You know? Yes. And uh, truth itself is a paradox, you see, because you cannot escape the truth. Yet it's the truth that sets you free. Huh. That's fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. I like it. But um You're smart, dude. I like hanging out with you. Yeah. Well That's I fucking mean, badass. I like I like individuals. I find that with another reason why I, I dislike uh, ideas of collectivism, you know, like mm-hmm. like uh, 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 corporatocracy, yeah. uh, communism, socialism, Marxism, yeah. fascism. Mm-hmm. It, it's all stems from collectivism. Individualism is is that's that's where you 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 take up the most responsibility. You're gonna hold yourself accountable for more. You're going to improve more. Like me, I'm my favorite and least favorite person. You know what I mean? So like I, I want to like like do good and also yeah. like feel good about myself at the same time. Yeah, you're you know? doing great things in life. I, I admire you, man. Well, I like what you're you, doing. John. I like what you're doing. Well, I'm I'm really uh, thrilled that you're here. Actually, yeah, you know I'm honored I mean? to be here. I appreciate your hospitality. Bring me into your home. Well, it's it's all about uh, again. Like I like I like individuals. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like uh like I said earlier, I remember folks who are kind to me for no reason. Yeah. You, you've always been super duper kind to me for like. Oh, I appreciate that. Like so, like I I, re- I remember that my my um this was years ago yeah. my um. My uh, brother, uh, just late one night, my dad calls me. It's like three or four in the morning, and he says, "Your brother's bleeding. They can't stop it." And I asked him, "Like, what's wrong?" And yeah. He paused because he got choked up, and he said, "I don't know." So went to the hospital. His friend Bucky, God bless him. Uh, we've had our differences before, but he yeah, saved my yeah. brother's life that night. Took him to the hospital, uh, but he uh, he somehow. Uh, I think it was his uh, esophagus. He ripped it somehow from like vomiting oh, wow. and like was just like evacuating and vomiting blood like shit, like terrifying shit, man. Yeah. Um, but the uh, there was a there was a guy. He was a, he was one of the nurses that was there that you know like helped like save my brother and mm-hmm. whatnot. And he happened to know my brother like. Like wow! From high school, what a coincidence! Something. They weren't in the same class or anything, but yeah. and he was uh, like my uh, brother had mentioned something like 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 he had like liked them or something. Like yeah. they were smart and they respected each other. Yeah, they were yeah. a different age. And my uh, you know, my mom told me she's like, I always remember that you never know who people are gonna be like whenever you get older. Like the, like, oh. kids, like the you know folks you know like whenever you're young that's like, fascinating like you never know who somebody's gonna turn out to be one wow they get what an interesting story so, but like yes yeah, sir yeah because I I like what what happened if it was like a really despicable person you know that, yeah you know what I mean and I I don't think that even a despicable person would do that I think they would just gloat about it afterwards you know what I mean yeah <laughs> but um. That's a beautiful story, man. Yeah, but well, he ended up, he's okay though. He's okay. Yeah, yeah. Like wonderful. Uh, but yeah, you should. Uh, you shouldn't need an incentive to be kind to people, other than like that's how you should want to be treated. Exactly. You know I mean? Exactly. Yeah. 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 And like, there's there's something magical with that. And yeah. Uh, like, yeah, very very much so. As long as you respect another human being and respect their existence and appreciate them and appreciate their presence, they'll do the same for you. It's very very simple. It's yeah. a great. It's a and it's, enjoy company. Yeah, and it's a enjoy very. It's, it's a great way to like live your life, man. Because yeah, like it, it creates harmony. You know what I mean? Yeah. And even though I have fallen uh, far from the church, and uh, you know that's 
part of the reason why the show is you know New Southern Heretics because I, I like folks that are that are heretical uh, heretically minded. You know that you know you you don't you don't subscribe to the orthodoxy no matter what the orthodoxy is that it has been forced upon you or that like you're subjected to like you yeah you 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 don't you don't fall in line you you carve your own path right like, I like you the should, concept yeah. like I I think it's in part something that kind of uh, draws me to like the uh, the world of conspiracy so much is because it's a quest for truth. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah. like I I don't like uh, I don't like echo chambers or like just being validated like all the time. I like coming yeah. across information where I'm like, I didn't think about it like that. I didn't think about it like that. That's the most beautiful experience ever, yeah. That's education. I love education. And the more hungry you are for the knowledge, you can get it. I yeah. love research. I love research. The internet's a beautiful thing. You can learn almost fucking anything on the internet. It really you know? is. And, and, you know, but but you got to be careful where you point your finger mm-hmm. on the internet. Like what you said about echo chambers. Yeah. But the in- information is out there. You just got to research it. And the more you just jump in into the information, you become an expert at that stuff. I mean, I love your open-mindedness. I think that's... And I've learned that, too, in school. I mean, that's a really good trait to have. (laughs) Open-mindedness. And... You saw me get scared by the cat. (laughs) Where the cat at? He was, this this chair has has like little slats in the back yeah. of it, yeah. right? Like right? little like little <laughs> bars, like little bars. Yeah. Bonkers. And Come here, bonkers. I, I thought bonkers. Bonkers. I thought bonks was outside, bonkers. and I feel something like rubbing on my back. I'm like, what the fuck? What the fuck? Oh yeah. Oh but man. um, hey, do you want to hit? Do you want him my tobacco pipe? <laughs> you want to hit Chief Seattle's tobacco pipe? What? I haven't, uh, I haven't. It made haven't from a deer antler. I got it from Cherokee. You know, I haven't had a. Uh, I haven't. I know bonkers. Hello. You gotta get away from there, though. There's wires. I haven't had a. I haven't had a raw tobacco in a long time. But don't pull on it too hard or it'll burn your throat. Pull on it kind of slow. That is tasty tobacco, though. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I think that's the. Stop doing that. Yeah, you're making biscuits on my back. I see you. Come on. I Bonkers, come you. here. Come here, kitty. He just wants to wreck shit. Oh. Uh, wants to wreck shit? Mm hmm. Well, it's not, it's not quite wrecking shit time. Usually around like 1 or 2 a.m. Yeah. is when his namesake yeah, comes out. Like oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talks. Like, you just like shh, slide across the floor. Dude, he'll start like having conversation. He's a talkative cat. Like, he and I will talk sometimes. Yeah, what's he saying? He mostly says meows, but normally my replies are a mixture of just whatever, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does he just spontaneously Uh, play in the morning, like late at night, like four in the morning or three in the morning? Normally by then he's pretty chill because I'm asleep. Normally around like seven or eight, that's when he'll start trying to wake me up for shit. Yeah, I see some cats, man. I love it, though. Like he's... Oh, I got a cat. He's pretty chill. He's fine. What's the black cat's name? I got the black cat. Bonkers. Bonkers. Come here, kid. You scared me away. Oh, Bonkers is my friend. This is male or female? Oh, come here. He's a dude. All right, sorry. He's a little self-conscious, though, because he's boy. got titties, but... You're just getting old. I, I mean, yeah, I've got titties, too, so... Me, too, yeah. man. I got to get back in the gym. I've lost... Um, it's been now... Um, I'm almost down to 70 pounds. I'm like over 60 pounds in the past year. Awesome. From I was at uh, 282, and yeah. now I'm down. That's uh, wonderful. 217. Okay. So. What'd you do different? Um, changed my diet. Yeah. I uh, I still I've still got my 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 little milf weights. I call them. They're little seven pound barbells. They're like neon orange. Oh, that's beautiful. But I mean, I've got my standing desk. Like so, like I like. Oh yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so I'm able to like. All right, let me at least like. Little exercise is better than no exercise, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, as far as like losing the weight, I uh, started doing uh, intermittent fasting. 
Oh, yeah. uh, because I was like, man, I don't want to change like everything I eat and try to do that. And like, cause I've done shit like that before. And I, I, I phase out of it. Like after like a couple of days, like this is fucking dumb. Like, yeah. uh, but I was like, it's all, it's all about caloric intake, right? It's all yep. numbers game. Right. So just be mindful of like sugary stuff. So like, again, like I'm having, uh, alcohol cause this is a special occasion. You know hey, what I mean? That. I so... <laughs> I feel privileged to be here. Oh, yeah, dude. Feels like fun. I haven't seen you in like over a decade. So I know. Like, what a treat. I know. That's you know? wonderful. <laughs> we had such great times back in the day. I always, enjoyed, time, your, I always enjoyed your company. I man. appreciate that, dude. And, and and I enjoyed yours as well. Yeah, man. But um, You're a badass, dude. Yeah, I had a... Uh, I cut out a meal for the day. I was like, yeah. I was like, well, I do two meals a day instead of three meals a day. I don't okay. need three meals a day. Like, yeah. I'm fat. Like, I can cut down like my meals. So, it took about like... I'd say, I'd say like three weeks or so to like get accustomed to like the hunger pain, right? From yeah. like like changing like when I was eating because yeah. I'd be like, all right, wake up, no breakfast. Like, and that's just that's just what you do. You gotta wait till it's lunchtime and yeah. then. I've heard of that too. Yeah, yeah but yeah, I I didn't even notice like any you. results or anything. But it uh, it fucking worked, man. Like, uh, just I had to get in the screen. Just over uh, over time. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, ah. yeah. Any small change over time can make a big difference. Yeah, I I yeah. learned that from uh, two years ago. I I got a gym membership, and I uh, started noticing like the big difference in like muscle growth. Where I was like, I was like, damn, dude, like I got yeah, like, yeah, I got yeah. fucking like going like, like upper body and shit. Like like I, I can like see my shoulder muscles. And awesome. Stuff. awesome. I, was, I, was, I was like, holy hell. Like, He's a Hulk. Well, because like I'd I'd always like when I was younger, I was just always like like I'm kind of built like a Viking, but like the, like the shortest <laughs> Viking there is. You know what I mean? Like I'm like the little person of giants, so yeah, to speak. Yeah. But um, so so then I was like I was like man, I was like I'm gonna start losing like some of some of this fucking fat off yes, of sir. me as well. You know, like like I figured that. I, the first thing I do, like, I get the dad bod, and then I lose that, and then I'll get kids, so that way I'll be like, all right, guys, I've already been there. Yeah. Like, we're good to go. And then, I'll, <laughs> then I'll be like, hot dad status, you know? Heck yeah, heck so, yeah. But, um, yeah, you, like, th- through the gym and through, like, uh, fasting and, uh, like, just moving out to the woods and mm-hmm. being, like, humble yeah. and... I uh, just being so grateful for the people I have in my life. You you learn a lot yeah, from true. starting back at square one or starting back at square none. You know, depending yeah. depending on what you're doing. Be grateful. Be grateful. Yeah. Be grateful for every heartbeat. Be grateful for every heartbeat. Heartbeat and every breath. Oh yeah, and man. You're gonna be good to go. I've watched. I've, I've watched friends. You know, like I've had friends die and. And I watch like yeah. one of them like like go and like it's not cool, man. And no. I know that if they were alive, the last thing they would want is for me to be doing jack shit with my life as far as like long term goals. You know what I mean? Like that's so respectful. And, well, it goes back to what you mentioned uh, yeah. earlier about um, politicians and whatnot. Like like a, even with like a uh, like a, this this girl I'm talking to now. Yeah. Like I I had told her like I don't. I don't give a damn what you did in your past. I don't care who you who you were in the past. I care about your present, and I care a lot about your future. Like, what do you want to do yeah. with like life? You know what yeah. I mean? Like, like because you like you can do just about anything within the scope of your abilities and your time and what you choose to do with. Yeah. It. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like it's everybody has different gifts, and I think if you're spending. If you're spending all your time just playing essentially video games, apps on your phone all day, like you're you're yeah. not do, you're not doing much with. You could be writing like all these Agreed. ideas you have. Why don't you just write? Start writing about like what your day was, Excuse me. like just like your life story. You know, be a creator. Like, be a creator, not a consumer. Be a producer, not a consumer. Well, put something into the world. Yes. You know. Yeah. Like. And maybe, yeah, maybe your dream, whatever your dream is. Yeah, some people... As long as it's a good dream. Yeah, and some and people it, live it, you know what I mean? Like their uh, their their job or their occupation is their... Um, uh, you good? Like they get the uh, the gratification 
like from it and like that's that's totally awesome and then whatever they do with their free time i mean shit i don't know but like if you should you should be doing something that it it makes the world a better place in the long run yeah i mean yeah absolutely absolutely and i love artists too i love your artistic talent man you're a very gifted artist well thank you like yeah when we get to the white house soon I'm gonna I'm gonna put your art in the White House. It'll hang it up. <laughs> are you and gonna run, you, are you gonna run for politics uh, one day? I don't know. I don't want to be a behind the scenes guy, but <laughs> then I won't be. I'll be on the pace and like yeah, behind the scenes, but not elected. I like Benjamin Franklin's philosophy. He said, uh, "If nominated, I won't run. If elected, I won't serve." He liked to be a behind the scenes guy. Mm-hmm. He was like, "I don't want I don't want to get involved with the bullshit." I like I like making the rules, but I don't want to be involved in the fucking bullshit. I like Benjamin Franklin philosophy on that. Now it's become such like a fucking dangerous game because now it's just like, all right, what's your persona? Because again, like everyone's tied into like this online persona, you know yeah, what I mean? Like, yeah. Where you you got to find people that are uh, squeaky clean. You got to say the right things. You got to tweet the right things. Exactly. You gotta, you gotta, that's why I love digging. Fly with that's why I things. love having these episodes with you. Because I like digging the ditch even deeper, <laughs> digging the ditch even deeper. They're gonna have so we much can, dirt. They're gonna have so much dirt on me that that uh, I'll have no other choice. I'll have no other choice but to do it outside of politics. It's, then it, it encourages we're make a reality TV show. It, it encourages a, a level of, of of honesty and vulnerability <laughs> as well. You yeah, know absolute I mean? vulnerability is like. Oh man, it's righteous in a weird way. Can you change that for me? Can you dump it out? Yeah. But yeah, man, it's just yeah. It's just be grateful for for every time. It's, it's just great. Have you ever um, you ever seen like a, a a UFO or had any uh, uh yes. alien type encounters before? Um, no. No to the but, aliens, but yes to the UFO. Amazing. Yes to the reference to the UFO. I met a woman who I trust, and she said she believes in UFOs, and she lives in Augusta, Georgia, and had a video taken that she had recorded, I don't know, a couple of years prior, and uh, it looked like a, it did look like a, it did look like a craft, but, well, it was just, it was just, I'll, I'll say this, I'll say this, it was Lights, three lights. I think it was like three lights, maybe. Oh man, I'm pulling my phone up in a minute. Three lights, but spaced evenly, um, in the sky. I can't really describe the the distances, but maybe there's only three uh, three lights. But it was like spaced evenly in the sky. Each of these three lights, um, such that maybe you saw like ten of the three light combinations up in the sky, and it was moving through the sky very, 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 very slowly. Very, 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 very slowly. Mm. Um, were those drones all flying in unison? Uh, I don't know. But they were, they were, they, they did not move out of sync like they were definitely moving close together. And she was like, and, and everyone on the streets that night, they were all like, they come out the bars and they're like, what the fuck is that shit? And uh, they were looking over at the sky and they, she was videoing that shit. And uh, she was like, man, that stuff is crazy. And other people were taking pictures of it, too. And everyone was just totally baffled. Um, but she um, is someone who I trust. And she sold me her video that she took with her own cell phone on that night. And it seemed legit to me. I could believe it. I could believe it. I could well, absolutely well, were believe the, uh, were the Were the lights, like, spread out pretty far? The three uh, lights you're uh, in the video, um, or, or were they like in a line, or were they like in one like collective being, or no, 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 what they, did it look they, like? they were definitely spaced out. They were definitely spaced out, but they were just they were just single points of light. Um, so you saw one directly overhead, okay, and then you saw another um, at forty five degrees okay. off, and then the other one you saw at maybe another forty five degrees. Off of center. Okay. Okay. Um, plus or minus. Okay. Well, no, like, I got. I got a picture. picture. You're good. Defense. <laughs> and it goes through the sky. And uh, 
And then maybe, so if you can imagine that, you know, zero degrees, 45, 45, passing through the sky based on your perception looking up as a projection. It's passing through the sky. And then, uh, you know, within your field of view, you got the horizon in front of you and got the horizon behind you or the traffic or whatever it was. But maybe it's all like, um, and this was, this was downtown, so I didn't have the greatest field of vision. But I saw like maybe um, five sets of triplet um, sources of light. Like in the sky? Yeah. Moving. All moving in unison. Mm. And maybe doing that for 20, 20 seconds? As if, as if it was a giant spacecraft? And what's fun about life is that you could probably go, hey, it was just some drones from the Air Force base that was nearby. Or you can think it was an alien spacecraft. Mm. And I like, it sounds more fun to me, alien spacecraft. Totally. So, um, I sounds still, like so much fun. I don't, I don't think I've talked about this on the show. If we, I, if I have, whatever. Mm -hmm. But, um, I saw my first UFO. Whoa. Halloween morning. You saw one? I saw one. Right off of my front porch as I left to go get breakfast. Whoa. Now, the night prior, um, I was out um, with my, my buddy Michael Price and ran into uh, our, our mutual friend, uh, uh, Danielle. Yeah. And uh, and we, uh, we ended up hanging out for most of the night and, like... They uh, they uh, came back over here after we uh, left uh, 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 the, the bar where the band was playing and yeah. That, so whenever they left, it was like I think like close to like five o'clock. I was just like, man, like I'm doing intermittent fasting. I didn't eat supper. I said I went out, so like I want some Chick Fil A fucking breakfast. Yeah, like, yeah. And it's like time to time to go rock and roll. Yeah. Um, Beautiful. And I yeah. open up the door, and you know there's there's the glass doors right there, right? Yeah, yeah, and I check yeah. the time; it's like right after six. It's like six oh eight or so. And when I open the door, uh, first glance, I notice the moon is out, right above the tree line. Now it's okay. still dark out. Yeah. And my vision is then down as I'm opening the glass door. And closing the the oak the door behind me, yeah. And it it dawns on me that wait a second, this is six o'clock in the morning. The moon isn't going to be that bright nor visible in the eastern sky. Mm. And I look up, and this thing's as bright as the moon. Yeah, it looks like a star. It's not a star, but it's moving like it's drunk and in the sky. It's not a drone. I watched this thing for forty five minutes, John. Holy shit! It's the glare of light, it looked triangular. Yeah, okay. Like the all-seeing eye or the uh, Zelda Triforce okay. symbol where you've got a triangular light mm. of tr in each corner of the triangle and then one in the middle, right? Okay, okay. So a, a right tr or a, um, equilateral triangle, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And then you split that into four, I believe four, yeah, other equilateral triangles. Like a pyramid shape? Like, like a pyramid shape. And it's moving like it's trying to punch through something. Okay. Like uh, imagine like a giant um, piece of cellophane, right? And we stretched yeah. it out, and yes. I'm trying to like yeah, yeah, punch yeah. you or like like get to you, and I get close, and ugh, it just keeps pulling me back like that. That's how this star was moving, and it's perfectly positioned in the trees. If you notice, like like we're out here kind of in the boonies and there yeah. are thick trees across the road. Yeah. It's positioned perfectly to fit right in this crevice that I'll see coming out the front door. Now, like, I had a really meaningful, like, yeah. like whole, like, like month and week, like, leading up to this. Holy I shit. think that this thing wanted me to see it. Yeah. Like, I, like, as stupid and as odd as that sounds, I, I watched it until the sky was no longer... Navy and black, but it was now like like orange yeah. and like bits of light coming up. I this thing it. was not a drone. Wow. Like it, it moved like 
Imagine if you're looking at a star, right, and it's, yeah. it's bright, and imagine it moving what seems like uh, maybe like two or three inches in the sky, Yeah. right? That's as far as it moved, but in 45 minutes. Wow. And I was able to see that it's still up there. Holy shit. And, like, there's cars just driving by, like, not even knowing, just like, yo, bro, there's, there's a fucking, like... You were they didn't notice. Whatever. They didn't notice. I didn't take out my phone because I, f- I thought that it wanted me to see it and not record it. Okay. Like it wanted me to witness it. Yeah. You gotta respect the energy. I've I've never I've never seen anything like that, man. But yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like like I said, like like I maybe you had some gifts. You could see into a different dimension. I hadn't seen my friend. They couldn't see in that. I hadn't seen my friend Danielle in over a year. And yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, Whenever, like, I saw her, like, 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 I, like, I lost my grandma this year. I lost my uncle this year. Oh, you know? God bless you, sir. Like, I mean, like, I know it's been a, a rough year for everybody. I'm not trying to, you know, yeah. milk any points it's or anything. It's been a rough but, year. But like, she's like, she's very dear to me. Like, she was, yeah. uh, she was uh, on a, uh, a, she and two other uh, gals were on a song of mine called "Fuck Boy" that I did on my second album. Like, yeah. like, ride or fucking die. Like, like, she's a fucking good fucking person, man. Rock and roll, dude. And so, like, like. Like I said, like I hadn't seen her, and like, yeah. like all this shit had been like piling up, and you know what I mean. Yeah. And like, yeah, it was it was really good to see her. When it when it, I was engaged a few years ago, and um, whenever that fell apart, she was like one of the only people that would like hang out with me. We just played chess, man. Yeah. Like I and like I had uh, 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 an old friend of mine that was going to the gym with me, and then like he. He he just lost his fucking way, man. Um, oh. on, on on just any type of level, but um, she oh. was like like just like like hang out with me and like be like she wouldn't encourage me to drink or anything because yeah. I was like I was like I don't want to fucking drink, man. Like like yeah, I yeah, yeah. like it's not gonna do me good right now. Like I'm right. already like yeah in it, you know. Yeah. But like so like it was really awesome though. Like it's good like, to be sober. Yeah. But, well, I mean, it's moderation. Is, moderation. moderation is key. Middle way. The middle way. Yeah. You know. But, this is not too much. Don't do it too much. No, but um, that's that, right. but that that fucking UFO man, like that's wild. Like dude. like like I said, like it's just something from like all all of the all this year and whatnot, and like it was perfectly positioned. Yeah, like for me to see at yeah. this perfect time of day. Yeah, like right in the morning, and when, by the time I I got back after like forty five minutes, when the sun started coming up, it started becoming difficult to see but it was still flashing like it was okay. still like glowing like like i said as bright as the moon yeah like, like it was glowing that is fascinating and, and but it like with the sun coming up then like you know the sun's brighter than it yeah yeah, yeah. It made, it made it did you feel like a paralysis type of effect or did you feel like an <laughs> awe or so beauty or frightened not frightened awe definitely awe like, yeah. like uh, even me laughing to myself quietly, like, what the <laughs> fuck are you, man? <laughs> like, like, what are you? Rock and roll, dude. Uh, yeah, man. It was, it was really, really odd. Yeah. My, my buddy Samson, about two or three weeks ago, called me up at like one o'clock in the morning with him talking about a UFO stories. Like, bro, okay. I know you're the only one who would, who would listen to me right now. And yeah. I'm just like... Be like interested. I'm like absolutely. I'm interested. Tell me your UFO story. <laughs> that's beautiful. I love. It. That's awesome. I've never. Yeah. So and you're the second person I've talked to who's witnessed one. That's amazing. It, it, I want to see one. We got to go to Air 51, man. I th- I think they'll let me in. I think we can pull this off. I think now that's like the. That would be something like the like the Disney arm of the uh, intelligence agency yep. right yeah. because everybody knows about it creativity right? like they but we gotta go to area 51 and then live stream it on youtubes <laughs> i went to uh, i went to roswell just to see what we got going on i went to and Ro- not keep no secrets because if the aliens i want to know and everybody else want to know too so let's just stream it on the youtubes because the youtubes was put there for us to stream that that's what i think i think it's a good <laughs> idea um that'll be fun as shit dude <laughs> I went to Roswell when I was younger. My family oh, took cool. us there. Um, it, it was it was really cool. I don't know how it is now, uh, you know. But um, now the only time I ever saw aliens was from psychedelics. <laughs> like, yeah. like, but like UFOs, like I'd always be like, I'd see stuff online where I'm like, that's yeah. fucking wild. You know what I yeah, mean? But yeah, yeah. 
never anything first like first hand and like That's every wild, everything dude. I've seen has been different. Yeah. With like UFOs and I would I was talking with my dad about it and my dad said uh, you you wished I had uh, I had filmed it. <laughs> I was like yeah man but yeah yeah but but he had uh, he said that um I was talking with him that I I think that uh, the the NASA uh, PR stuff is fakery as far as aliens go with from outer space. Okay. Uh, I think they're I think it's like from Earth itself like this this oh. realm. Okay. And my dad was like, <laughs> like like yeah I would think they're already here. I was like, yeah exactly like it makes yeah. a lot more sense if like they're already here like they're they're not they're not coming from space or anything like that they're already yeah. here but they can move and like alter things that are in space you know what i mean like yeah like and I, I don't know what it is i don't know if it's a vehicle or a god or an angel that yeah. was sent to me you know yeah i i, I did have a you know i I decided to, you know, carpe noctum, carpe diem. What does that mean? Uh, seize the night, seize the day. Okay. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, wish upon a star. So, like, I, you yeah. know, I said a prayer, you know, whenever uh, I uh, saw it. Because I've, I've been watching it at this point for, like, 20 minutes. That's wonderful. It's fucking wild. What a beautiful experience. It, it was. Yeah. It was. What a beautiful experience. What do you? What would you think uh, aliens would be? You think they would come from different planets? Do you think they would be like uh, these uh, these uh, elves or whatnot that uh, they talk about from psychedelic experiences that uh, people can see these entities? I recently came across a video that was very interesting to me, and um, was interviews with people who had had basically near-death experiences or death experiences where they're basically proclaimed dead for, I don't know, a minute or two minutes or something like that, but a not insignificant amount of time. And um, they described these experiences as just being, um, feeling, um, as, as this some, some sort of transformative, transcendent um pure energy and felt like they went into this like invisible energy universe force and they were able to communicate with their ancestors and he, and like this one woman was like I was there I was there with my deceased father and I was with him and it was like I don't um, have to use language to communicate with you I just can feel your own energy and your energy can feel my energy and it's such a wonderful feeling. And that was like one woman's, I think, kind of testimony on what it was like to die. Mm. But then they brought her back to life for something on the physical world um, after she had been, whatever, proclaimed dead for two minutes or right. three minutes or whatever. And that was just... Man, that was that was very fascinating to me. That is a very interesting experience. And 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 then they went on and they had a couple of other people say that they basically had the exact same experience. And the video seems to cover basically all the religions from what I recall. I could be wrong. It doesn't matter if you're Christian or Muslim or Buddhist, Hindu, you know. Etc. Whatever. But maybe it's just whatever you believe is the future. You know, make it the future. I don't know. But yeah, I'll just I'll stop there. I had um, I'd had this um idea that I kind of toy with the unknown, and as far as um ideas of like lesser gods and afterlife okay. and things of that nature, yeah. that you can uh. You can essentially you can appease, you know, gods of uh, malevolence, wickedness, you know, and um, like get out of the matrix as yeah. it were, you know. But you would go to their paradise. Okay. And why would you want to go to a paradise of a place where, uh, you know, you have things like destruction, 
yeah. and malice, yeah. and you know all all of these uh, uh, ideas of wickedness, as it were, you know. Yeah. But um, things often associated with the masculine. It can be, but there's also shadow feminine as well, you know. Oh. The female yeah. shadow self. You know? Okay. Okay. But I mean, you know, things that the you know, old uh, polytheistic religions even talked about, which, I mean, even ideas that they uh, incorporate into monotheism, you know, like Christianity, like Christmas, I mean, it was, it was a, a Saturnalia, or Saturnalia, oh. it was a pagan uh, celebration okay. of uh, presents and uh, uh, giving, and, yeah. you know, like, that's, like, one uh, reason why they decided on... Hey, I saw Santa Claus yesterday at the mall. <laughs> I got a picture, too, of it. <laughs> I love me some Santa Claus. The, Santa Claus is real though too. At the same time, I I think that's not entirely uh, <laughs> false. Uh, I, I mean, like to I, pretend he's true, and he come on. My parents tricked me. My parents tricked me, and God bless him for that. That was badass. <laughs> learning Santa Claus is a lie is a good lesson to be learned. It's a good lesson to be learned because anybody will deceive you. Oh, and sometimes even, that's wise. That's even, wise. Even, I don't disagree with that a bit. Even no. for your own benefit. That's wise. Even for your own benefit. I can people. see that perspective too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. But um, yeah, one uh, one reason why they decide on the date uh, in particular, yeah. I forget when and where it was. Maybe it was the Council of Nicene or something. But um, uh, is because uh, uh, Saturnalia was December twenty fifth okay. on the calendar, and they were like, "Well, as a way to appease." Everybody, and that way you don't have like like a war going on. You can have a time of peace. You okay. throw the holidays on the same date, okay, and okay. everybody will be peaceful then. And it worked, as it turns out. And here in the West, in America, uh-huh. everybody's peaceful for the most part on Christmas. Even businesses oh. will close their doors, yeah, in uh, honor of the peace. You know, yeah. they don't have to, but like, like they will. That's that's that's. I like that. Yeah, yeah. that's a good thing to do. Yeah, that's a good thing to do. Yeah. Balance can be achieved. <laughs> like it can be achieved. I I just don't like the notion of a like a one world order, a one world government. Because yeah, the only way you have that in a world without borders is you have to conquer it. You have to conquer the planet, and oh. then you set what the rules are, oh. and then you have world peace, as it were. But you don't have world peace. You have world order. So, like, ideas like uh, diplomacy and even uh, republicanism, but not in the modern sense as we think of it, but in the uh, principles of the ideology of that your small community is autonomous. You guys decide how you run your community. And your effects can then ripple out further, but you still have the say-so. Our Tenth Amendment, as it were, says uh, that uh, whatever rights are not uh, reserved or provided to by the um, uh, first nine amendments at the federal level okay. are then reserved to the states, right? Uh-huh. States' rights, All right. but comma, or the people. 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 Or the, yeah. So we're the people. Amen to that, dude. So um, our uh, not being able to um, practice shamanism Safely in America yeah. is an infringement not only on the First Amendment but on the Tenth Amendment as far as natural psychedelics no. and even something like uh, hemp or marijuana yeah. being classified as a drug. Yeah. Because it's plant medicine. Yeah. Well, not only that, the people didn't vote for these things to become illegal. We didn't. We didn't have we didn't a vote that? for that. Well, the Tenth what Amendment. Happened? Yeah. It's an it's a uh, what would you say? It's an infringement on the Tenth Amendment, right? Yeah. Aside from your First Amendment, it also infringes on that because you have a right to be able to use plants and medicines that grow here. They're abundant in nature. Yeah. Government has no say so about saying that you cannot eat this fruit you grow, you cannot yeah. drink the rainwater, and we have yeah. laws that are like that, you know? I've heard of the laws about you can't rainwater collect. Dude, uh, uh, what does that mean? I, I don't understand no, that at I all. Have, dude, likewise. I don't I, understand that at all. 
if I, I hope to never have to live in a city again. It come from the clouds. Right. It come from God. It come from the motherfucking clouds. Yeah. Groundwater is not exactly safe to drink, so why can't you gather yeah. rainwater? You know? I, I think the rainwater probably better for you than the than the fucking fluoridated bullshit that come out of your faucet and the chlorine and shit. I, got, I like drinking I, the rainwater. I got water. well water here. When it rains, so. when it rains, I just open my mouth, my mouth, and you stick your tongue out, and then you drink the rain. Yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah, it's absurd. Like uh, in some like cities, though, like have laws that you can't grow your own food in the city. Or yeah. that you can't nope. gather uh, rainwater in the city. Yeah. You can't feed the hungry in the city. You know, like. Well, you can't feed the hungry in the city. They're, they're, I'm just saying, like, look into it. There's certain laws where people have gotten arrested because they're, they're trying to feed the homeless. But I wouldn't say they're homeless. They're trying to feed the hungry, right? Mm-hmm. Like. Why is that a crime to try to feed hungry people? Great fucking question. Don't know. But all I know is that where you. I don't understand that. Where at you all. see the most. If people are hungry, you feed them. When you see if you the, have extra food, you feed them. Absolutely. You, you people. Shit. That's fucking bullshit, dude. Yeah. That, there's something about where you see cities and you see the most abuse of people and yeah. ab- abuse of their their constitution. You know, like, America's fucking brilliant in the constitution because, like, it doesn't give a shit who you are at all. Mm-hmm. Like, if that's your argument, like, to use, all you need is, like, the Constitution. Yeah. And, like, you, like, doesn't give a damn if you're wealthy or poor, what pussy you fell out of, where you fell out of, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. And so, as far as, like, the the long run, like, that's a fucking brilliant document. And, like, this is why it's the place to be, is because you can argue those principles. Yeah. And, like, yeah. like you're good to go. Yeah. But you see in these big cities, you don't see in, in rural areas where you have this fascistic type of uh, laws that come in where it's like, you can't gather rainwater here, sorry. You can't grow your own food in your backyard here, sorry. It's against the rules. Like, are you out of your fucking mind, dude? Yeah. Like, like you have a right to be able to grow your own food. I don't give a fuck who you are. Like, I like, agree. Like, that's, 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 it was somebody, it was either in Flint or somewhere in near Flint in Michigan that argued that water is actually not a basic human right. It's like, are you fucking kidding me, dude? Yeah. Like, we don't yeah. need to bring water and food into politics. I like, agree. you know yeah. what I mean? Like, air, water, and food, like, like these, these are th- things we're blessed to ha- have access to in society because we don't have to f- fucking kill beasts anymore. We don't have to, yeah. you know. Yeah. Like it's a gift. It's a gift yeah. given to you. The land. The land. Oh, that's why I like the Native Americans' uh, philosophy on it. The the Westerners think that we own the land. The Native Americans believe that the land owns us. We belong to the land. And I would we, I would agree with the latter of those as well. Yes, and uh, in contrast to the Westerners' approach that hey we do uh, Westerners' approach is the white man the white man he think uh, we inherit we inherit the land from our ancestors we inherit the land from our ancestors it belongs to us now and we have dominion over it now, the Native Americans think. That we do not inherit the land from our ancestors. We borrow it from our children. We borrow it from our children. And put a lot of focus on making a better world for the children always in the future. And making sure that the world is going to be better tomorrow than it is today. That's the goal. Yeah, it, it is, and it needs to be. And I think that maybe the way that the Westerners have come to manage our monetary policy comes into play because it's kind of the monetary policy is one that enforces, reinforces the ideology that is we do inherit the land from our ancestors that it belongs to us, and we're going to try to also capitalize on it and with the way we manage our monetary policies it's not necessarily in accordance with God's laws and the laws of the universe and climate change and all that stuff and we're polluting the environment every day and we got a bunch of I mean it's just a mess we got too many greedy narcissistic men at the top making decisions that affect the entire planet so we got to kind of reverse our time perspective 
And maybe one of the ways to do that, I could be wrong, but maybe one of the ways to do that is to reverse the way we manage our monetary policy because when we make loans at interest and all the time, we're always increasing taxes on the children. So we're kind of fucking our children in the future. They're just going to get taxed at a higher rate. They're introduced to a world that is of less opportunity than was, I don't know, maybe, maybe. Or what uh, they inherited. Exactly, exactly. Like, why we're, we got to be making a better world for the future, but right now we're making a worse world for the future with the way we're behaving on the planet. So we gotta, we gotta, we gotta address car, uh, climate change. We gotta address climate change. I love Elon Musk. He's a fucking hero. He's like, oh man, I'm gonna hang out with Elon Musk one day. I hope <laughs> he'd be a cool guy to hang out with. You wanna hang out with Elon Musk too? I gave you a machete, dude. You're, nice. <laughs> You're fucking nice, right dude. We gotta both, we gotta both go on the spaceship with Elon Musk with our fucking I, I, machetes, bro. Of course, I would take you up on that offer. I mean, Fuck yeah, dude. Okay. You want to go to Mars? Elon Musk, the only reason... I don't think it would be Come Mars. Come on, man. Let's go I to don't, Mars. I don't, I don't think... You want to go to Venus, then? Here's I'm going to Venus. That's the female planet. <laughs> I would go female planet. Amen to that. I think, <laughs> I think that if you can go to other planets, I don't think rockets are the way they would get there. I think they would have to use, like, a Stargate and, like, fold space-time. Which would be something like kind of like the UFOs that I saw. Oh. Like technology that like being able to use the ether to transmit information yeah. wirelessly, right? The yeah. internet, right? We have that I now. Think, uh, but they China? had that yeah. in the mid twentieth century. Yeah. Like they had that technology. The yeah. ARPANET, I think, was the first thing they rolled out. It was between four locations. Uh, I think uh, USC was one of them, and they had some military bases and yeah. another university. I think one was in Washington or Alaska. I, I, I would I would imagine so, but yeah. like like that's that was like uh, I think the mid '60s. Yeah. So while this is all going on to the public, they're talking about the space race, right? Yeah. Like that's what's going on. But really, what's going on is they're setting up the internet, like in the in the in the background. Okay. Right. And so like yeah. I, I I think because like they were shown. Somehow, maybe it was aliens, maybe it's angels, maybe it's demons, maybe it's all of the above. Who knows? Yeah. But this transcendental technology that is like essentially like a stargate or like the oh. mirror that they talked about like in like, you know, Tolkien days where like yeah. they pour into the mirror and you could see the future, yeah. you know, in, in silver, right? That's awesome. Like, I, I, I think that... So, like, whatever they're working on now, right, I think Elon Musk is of a part of this thing that says, like, hey, you know what? Your NASA idea, in 50 years or so, yeah. nobody's going to believe them. They're going to be completely debunked, and the, all your shit's going to be blown wide open. You need to invest in a private genius entrepreneur instead yeah. to have this idea of competition in the space race that's also American as fuck. <laughs> and, like, and you get people like behind on that yeah, again dude. like yeah, it's dude. brilliant like, I love Elon Musk meanwhile while he's, he's the man dude while he's doing, love Elon Musk while he's doing all the SpaceX stuff he's still got all this other stuff going on with like Tesla and like building like these uh, 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 transit systems uh, uh, that are underground yeah Just, you know what I mean like, he's changing industries with his Brilliance, right? So, like the the SpaceX thing, it's that's just that's the Disney part of it. Yeah, right. So, like, I love his vision. I, He's I, such a visionary. I wonder what the fuck they're working on in the background now. Was like the whole long tangent. So, if think about it, if in the '60s, whenever they're the they have the Apollo program going on, okay, right, and the space race, and uh -huh. you know, like it's uh, uh, that's the 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 theater that's going on. Meanwhile, they're creating the internet. Okay. Like they're setting the foundation for the internet. What would you think they're working on now? Like while well, they're making uh, everybody think that the rockets are still the way to go. I don't think the rockets are how we get to Mars. If we can't get to Mars, yeah, I think you would have to fold space time somehow. You think UFOs and things like that? That's what I would think. You don't think we could get a rocket and go out there? I don't think so. I think our atmosphere it's acts. Not free. I think our atmosphere acts more like a partition because you can't have an atmosphere and a vacuum next to each other. You have to have some sort of partition, right? 
No, so I think with enough gravity, I thought it holds the gas molecules close to the Earth. Gravity has not been proven yet, right? It's a theory. So if density is all we're talking about, that it has to puncture our atmosphere and get through the Van Allen's radiation belt, right? And then keep going. I don't think that's possible. I could be wrong. I'm an yeah, idiot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know I don't know. I, mean? I don't know. I could be wrong too. But uh, the but, idea of um, uh, even if gravity is real, like yeah. there would still need to be some sort of partition f- to keep the vacuum of space because it's going to be a hard <laughs> stop at some point, right? When vacuum begins and then atmosphere begins, there has to be. They called it a firmament. You know, in the okay. in the Bible, you know, okay. the, the flat Earth model, it's yeah. the it's the dome of the snow globe. Okay, right? okay. So I don't think that they figured out a way how to get rockets past that. I think the there's some article I read about somebody a scientist uh, postulated the moon is actually in our atmosphere. Check this out: the moon would be inside our atmosphere and is the first heavenly body we encounter. Wow. And its orbit is in this sort of uh, electromagnetic ether that Tesla talked about that orbits the Earth. Wow. You know? I have not heard No, I have not heard that. So the moon would have to be significantly smaller That's and significantly closer. Wow. But that uh, they said that it could possibly be as close as 33,000 miles as opposed to 732 uh, however many thousand miles. Wow, that is interesting. That's yeah. very interesting. I've got a buddy of mine. He's uh, very interesting in the in the moonlight, and he 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 says that he sees that he's. I, I want to say that he says that uh, the moonlight um, uh, has a natural cooling effect. It's cooler than the shade. Than the shade, and he measured it with a temperature gun, and I was like, "That's fascinating." It's weird. Now, that's he... very fascinating, but I don't know. I honestly, in the with regard to the nature of the transition from the atmosphere to the, to the uh, universe I understood it not as a direct partition between boom boom you know but that um, the gravity is so but intense that the, the gravity is so intense that it holds the atmosphere on the planet and, and it just naturally transitions from a lesser dense atmosphere to a less uh, or excuse me uh, transitions from a more dense atmosphere to a less dense atmosphere and then so yeah, you got some gas molecules floating out there for a little bit. Okay, and so you, I guess the argument that's then the, would be that's because the way, we're so small, we would only perceive it as a gradient. When in actuality, yeah, it's a gradient to the universe. It's, it's actually gradient. very, very. <laughs> but I could be wrong. But you know, <coughs> I went to the. I went to the. I, I don't know. That's what they told me in the in the school. That's what they told me in school. <sighs> The, uh, the I moon, could be wrong. The moonlight thing. Well, the I argument. Could be wrong. The argument is that it's the sun's light that's reflected off of it, right? And after um, after going down the rabbit hole with uh, uh, many a uh, a, uh, a flat Earth video, and uh-huh. uh, I think that shit's fascinating. But um, the uh, the eclipses has always been like something where I'm just like, all right, like well, how how do you guys solve this? If like. We're talking about like the the lunar eclipse, right? Because it's a shadow that's okay. presumably being cast on the moon, yeah, okay. right? The solar eclipse on a on the flat model would make sense because the world is like this. This round tabletop is the world, right? Okay. And the sun uh, in the summer months makes smaller, slower circles near the North Pole, which is where the mic would be. All right. The winter solstice it makes faster bigger circles okay and the reason you have uh, an antarctic sun mm. is because the sun is so close to the edge it causes refraction called a coffee cup caustic effect mm. where if you hold a light source close to the edge it will illuminate more than just the edge it'll actually <laughs> illuminate everything around 360 <laughs> degrees like the northern lights thing yeah the kind of yeah uh but this uh Um, what are we talking about after the atmosphere? Brain fart. Uh, it happens. Yeah, it does. Um, I don't know. But yeah, the moon yeah, yeah, being yeah. like, like uh, closer in. But um, 
Something about the solstices and the and the, um, the lunar solstice and the oh the, the the eclipses right eclipses yeah 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 okay thank you mm -hmm. um, so the the argument that they make for the eclipses for a solar eclipse is they're both contained inside this uh, you know this world okay. the, the world is a globe it's just you're inside of it right All right so their argument for the Solar eclipse is that they're actually both inside, and because they're the same size, the moon will block out the sun. Okay. So that makes sense. But the shadow part, like I was like, like yeah, I, I don't see it, fellas. Yeah, like I don't see it. But this channel on YouTube, they did a like a two and a half hour breakdown of like lunar eclipses. Pretty fucking fascinating stuff. Oh, like, interesting. As far as like what what about the temperature changes? With Did the moonlight? They, yeah. That I don't understand. But okay. I would argue the moon makes its own light. There's fungi and plants that oh. only react to moonlight. And, they, and the, like, they, this is a word I'm just making up. That's... They lunar synthesize the light and react oh. in a certain way, right? There's certain mushrooms that will only release their spores in a full moon. Okay. There's certain plants that will only bloom at night and in moonlight. Like, they're... Yeah. But, but yeah. they didn't yeah. find any evidence of that when we went to the moon, right, though? I don't think we uh, went to the moon in that regard. You I don't think, think so? No, I do not. I think, I think that um, they've shot stuff at the moon. I don't think that... People have walked on the moon. I would think it's more like some sort of plasmid or some sort of like space okay. egg. You know what I mean? Where it like you can't land on it. It doesn't oh. really have gravity or anything like that. It's just it's a wormhole, right? Whoa! Oh, okay. Like 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 a, a like an alien <laughs> spaceship in the sky or something. It's, it's you know what I mean? I don't know. Like but I don't buy the whole uh, the double whack theory. Mm. Where that there was some sort of planetary body that collided with Earth and a chunk of it spun off and then it came back again and struck Earth a second time and that formed this chunk that is now the moon and now it's just going around our planet. Like that's the mainstream theory of how the moon came to be. That sounds like some Santa Claus shit. <laughs> like, like it just does. Like... Why can't we just say, we don't know what the fuck the moon is. We yeah. don't know what the fuck the sun is. I don't think the sun is a star, either. I think the sun is a sun. I think it's different. Sun? I think, the, I think oh. our sun is a sun. I don't think it's a star. I don't think stars are necessarily suns. I think you're right, because what is a red giant? Well, it's like a gas giant. Yeah, but but it looks more solid. The sun does because it got dark spots because it's not hot as as hot as the rest of the areas. Mm -hmm. So, so the dark spots is a solid. It's like a golf ball or just like something like smoking smoking in this. Yeah, the tobacco, and when it turns to the ash, it is solid. Yeah, it's like it's a spear. Yeah, it's a, it's a it's a trinity. It's something. If you like think that. about it, like even fire is a trinity, right? Because you Ashes. have you have the flame, you have the light, and you have heat. Like, yeah. and they're 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 all one, and yet they can be separated it's in just, life. You know what I mean? It's like something is that's something. That's not just a star. Mm -hmm. The um, I think it, the it's astrophysics bad. would argue that uh, what they'll do they'll look at the light, and you can look at light and break down the data, uh -huh. and then see like well they have the same type of data from the light. It's like, well, I mean, yeah, but I mean, we're really fucking close to a pig as well. Mm -hmm. Big fucking difference between a human being and a pig, though. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I've never seen a pig start a business. <laughs> 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 Just saying. So, like, I I, I don't, like, I, I've, I've, I, I think that, like, our sun is a sun. I think it's I think it's different than the stars that we see. I don't think all stars are suns. I think they're stars, right? And some uh, the planets they look just like stars until you look up close with like a telescope. Yeah. And then like you see like the ring on Saturn, but it doesn't look like how NASA will like put out these beautiful like uh, uh, atmosphere pictures. Yeah, and it's their composite uh, uh, drawings. So. 
Now, a, a composite drawing can be a panorama as well, right? Okay. So, I mean, that's that's kind of a loaded term to use, but what some of these images they'll be, they'll uh, using like satellites on just what I presume are just balloons, or just like, hey, why don't we just tie a fucking balloon to this guy and just see how far up it'll go? Like that makes sense. You can YouTube videos of them satellites on balloons, like. Yeah. Like, so I don't think you would necessarily need, like, rockets to go, like, oh, okay. like, like, you could use air or something, but, um, yeah. uh, some of the photographs, Device. yeah, yeah, some of the Not photographs they'll send back, they'll be like, well, this is a composite drawing of how the planet looks with x-ray light, with visible light, with, uh, 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 uh infrared light, yeah. with gamma ray light, you know what I mean? And they'll blend them together, okay. like, it's... It's it's Disney. It's CGI. The one thing I've seen uh, that uh, NASA put out not too long ago, where I was like, "That's cool and looks realistic," was the black hole because it looks crummy as fuck. Like the uh, digital picture was like red, and you see how pixelated it is. But that's how you would imagine looking really deep into space would look. Yeah. Like when you, if if you get a telescope out and you look at a star, you look as far like, as you can look. Yeah. Like, You're gonna zoom into the maximum. You're going to zoom in as far as you can zoom in? Yeah, but I mean, like <clears throat> like Saturn and Jupiter, like when you look at them through a telescope, or mm -hmm. even like a, you can YouTube, like a, I think it's a P9000 is the camera, where they'll just like zoom like miles and miles in. Okay. And like it's, it starts to raise questions about like, like why, like why would they even like put out these like images like at all? And it's, it's to deceive people, as far as I can tell. Like, even with oh. the way they um, they track their eclipses, they use a, um, I think it's called a Hadron Cycle, or maybe it's a Sorrow Cycle, S-A-R-O-S. -S. It's one of the two. I don't know why the fuck I'm mixing those words up. They don't even sound the same. Okay, no problem. But um, it's, a, um, it's a geocentric cycle that the ancients used to predict all eclipses and NASA uses it however because they can't take credit for it because it would go against the whole heliocentric argument that NASA has okay they attribute their predictions quote unquote to a former employee who used to work at NASA so they can't take liability for it okay. right but they're still using an old geocentric model that I believe uh, the the Greeks or the Romans used to use one of the Mediterranean giants, you know, okay. used and like they still use it today, and yet their whole argument is like like oh no like that's it's in this this is all cosmic happenstance okay. like there's probably billions of other planets out there and you know this just happens to be one of them. I think that's utter horseshit. Yeah. I think that Earth is magnificently unique. And magnificently special and in a specialized location. Doesn't matter if it's flat or globular or shaped like uh, uh, some fourth dimensional donut, you know, where it weaves like in that. and out of like itself. It. I like it, yes, yeah, sir. Like, we can only perceive things in the third dimension anyway, right? Yeah, okay. So, like, it's probably some shape that we can't comprehend, but the, like, the internet and the uh, uh, myriad of conspiracies has led me down this rabbit hole of. You can use science to start making predictions and um, uh, arguments for God and for God's existence, oh, yeah. for Earth being essentially a special place. Like even Hubble himself uh, argued that um, the idea of Earth being the center of the observable universe can't be disproven and that it was yeah. an intolerable point of view. Because he couldn't dis he couldn't disprove it. They 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 in his studies like he found the redshift in uh, galaxies. So the idea of like the Big Bang, right, mm -hmm. where uh, things are galaxies are exploding away from us. Yeah, okay. And it's yeah, like yeah, Doppler, yeah. right? Where <laughs> oh, awesome. Right, but um. <laughs> with, I love it. I love with it. visually, like when you look at galaxies, and yeah. the ones that are further away <laughs> yeah. are moving even faster and are even redder than okay. the ones that are closer to Earth. <laughs> okay. And Hubble discovered this, right? Wow. So, yeah. 
if you say that it's velocity from the Big Bang, like mm. from Earth being made and everything yeah. exploding out, mm. it puts Earth at the center of the observable universe and near the local void. Does the it? local void being the center of mass would put Earth at the center of mass. Really? Is that true? That's I true. Not, I did not know so that. So as an argument... We're at the center of the Big Bang? Well, that's the argument for geocentrism. Einstein and Mach both said that you can use... Uh, uh, Mach said it's relative... So yeah. you can't tell if Earth is fixed and space is spinning true. or space is fixed and Earth is spinning. That's you get right. the same result either way. Yeah, yeah, Einstein said sun-centered or Earth-centered can be argued with uh, equal value. Mm. But Hubble said that it was an intolerable point of view, geocentrism, that the Earth being the center. Because it, uh, it would negate uh, Copernicus and... Uh, 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 Kepler, oh, okay. uh, uh, completely as far as a sun-centered universe, yeah. which would kill uh, uh, evolution, which would kill heliocentrism, which oh. would kill like uh, this uh, notion of uh, uh, Big Bang cosmology of all this just came from a, a, a bubble bath out of nothing. You got something from nothing. That's just the way it, it always happens. It yeah. instead puts it at Earth is actually special. It's unique. Yeah. So Hubble came up with... Uh, counter for it which was dark energy and uh, dark matter okay. right to make the math work because he uh, uh, postulated that uh, you could uh, say that dark energy is what pushes everything away it looks everything's actually uniform but it yeah. looks like everything's being pushed away from us because it looks yeah. like that everywhere you go in space and that dark yeah. uh, matter would be what bound everything together even though it looks like it's moving further away from us okay because you couldn't have, because yeah. everything is still sort of fixed. You know, Orion doesn't move like that. Orion goes around Polaris every night. No matter what happens, Orion okay. is, you know, everything's fixed around Polaris. It's still going to do that. So the okay. argument is that you have things like dark energy that will hold galaxies in place while everything's moving further and further away. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. I've never, I've never heard that relationship before between dark energy and it's, the cosmology. Yeah. Are you familiar with the the difference in proportionality between like they they try to tie their equations together the theory of relativity and the, and the quantum mechanics and whatever all the different uh, types un of unpack it go ahead all, all the different types of physics they try to uh, they try to fucking uh, uh, make all the types of physics work together in unison to describe the universe but they can't um, make the Newtonian physics work with the quantum mechanic physics work with the whatever other names of the other f physics is that I'm thinking of. They can't make them all tie together in unison to describe the observable universe without this correctional factor that's called dark matter, dark energy. And the interesting thing is that the amount of dark matter, dark energy required to make the equations all jive together is greater than what the observable universe is. Like the unobservable universe is greater than the observable universe yeah. based on this concept that they've had to come up with to make the equations work. That is to make it uh, work together, whatever. With the dark, you know, with the observable universe, and what we don't, what we don't know. Yeah, because it's um, um, in the heliocentric model, it's like something like ninety plus percent of the unobservable universe is what exists. You know. And oh, is it ninety percent? I don't remember the numbers. <laughs> it's 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 a, some wacky amount. Okay, um, I didn't think it was ninety, but but um, that's just with Maybe. dark energy and uh, dark. Like, yeah. in, in order for the math to work out, yeah. like, that, it has to be, like, that obscene amount. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, if you just take velocity and you say that Earth is actually fixed, we're on some sort of thing, we are in a realm somewhere, mm -hmm. okay, or a computer game or something, but, like, we're someplace that is significant and special, then everything is just due to velocity. It just, yeah. like, that's it. You don't have to explain it with dark energy and dark matter. It's just 
velocity from the Big Bang. Okay. That yeah. would be it. Yeah. No. Yeah. But because, like, it unravels so much of dogma that people are like, they, they have these foundational pillars, right? Uh-huh. And where, they, where they've set up, some uh, folks have set their entire careers on, like, like claiming that, you know, all oh, the pyramids are only uh, uh, X, Y, and Z old. It's like, well, why, why is there erosion from millennia older than that on the pyramids, yeah. right? Yeah. Or uh, uh, Africans only got to the Americas during the slave trade. Well, why is there African uh, Olmecs scattered throughout the Americas yeah. and the Pacific Rim? If if they weren't uh, here yet, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like, like all everything has been like twisted and manipulated. Even like uh, the realm of science. Like, I never thought that the idea of like the Earth being the center of the universe was even a thing. Like, I never even like like fucking cared to think about. It. I always liked like um like uh, things like aliens bigfoot like and even yeah. like conspiracies when i was younger like I, okay. like jfk 911 like yeah. i mean like a lot of good questions around those around those happenings totally the gulf of tonka yeah but um yeah but then like uh, i i stumbled across you know just youtube rabbit holes and then you find documentaries that got published and then somebody with a, a bigger bankroll than what they had was just like no like we're not gonna we're not gonna have that. And then you you know you start seeing uh, they delete it. Well, I mean, look at it. Look at somebody like Alex Jones, right? Alex Jones, uh, like uh, broke the the Bohemian Grove, like where they were going to like that uh, uh, place in California with that uh, uh, stone or wooden owl, like Moloch statue. I'm not familiar and, with that. Weird stuff. Uh, he okay. uh, broke other stuff about uh, like the World Trade Organization, like mm. before nine eleven. Okay. And um, yet, most people know him just because at one point he was uh, claiming about Sandy uh, Hook, like uh, being a like a false flag oh. and stuff. Oh. And so, like that's that's the reason like you can deplatform him. Then you know what I mean? Oh and, yeah. Well, did but, he have, did he have evidence to support his claim? I don't. He says that he was given bogus evidence, so I don't know if he believes that or that's just damage control. Okay. But like, um, I don't know. The world is a stage. You know what I but, mean? What do you what do you think the Sandy Hook was stage? I don't think so. <coughs> I would hope. I not. think that it should happen. I, I, I mean, think it happened. So I wonder why he reported. I don't know. It seemed like everyone else. There's a bunch of media. There's a bunch of different media outlets. We need a bunch of media outlets to compare. Yeah. To see what they all say. Different people. People YouTube video cameras down the and that's what's been a beautiful thing and that and that mother Yeah, Jeff Bezos, he didn't know he was doing this, but he was actually setting the stage, if you think about it, for a kind of uh justice rebalancing because with people in the use of their iPhones all the time on the streets, videoing what's happening on the streets, you know, that that has actually been are actually key thing in the internet and actually been a very key thing in bringing balance back to this country because now you have the truth being broadcast yeah and that's a wonderful thing uh, that's kind of a tangent i forget what i was talking about earlier but i just want to say yeah man think about it. that's awesome that's so be grateful for the internet and then the truth be spoken yeah it's um what we don't want is we don't we don't want filters for this kind of shit, you know, you should be your own filter, you know, you don't want to have the state impart values and like tell you that like, well, no, 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 you, you don't want to listen to these people. These people aren't credible. Here, we, we've got credible people you need to listen to. It's like, well, yeah. Why can't I listen to somebody else? Diversity is great. Yeah. Well, yeah. people, people like this notion seems to be like, well, everybody think alike, but be diverse. It's like, well, you want diversity of things thought more than just diversity of culture and diversity of appearance yeah. you know what i mean yeah. like i i don't like ideologues the, they 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 want everybody to be like compliant and fit into their pigeonholes and you yeah know. i respect that yeah free spirit it is man you gotta you gotta be a free spirit so uh, like the blazers about austin state university about well, let me pronounce this correctly. Boston State University Blazers. 
Because every man must blaze his own path. That's the Native American proverb. Every man must blaze his own path. It's a good one. Yeah, I like that one. So we we yeah, we kind of got off uh, topic about uh, Jesus and meeting Jesus on the mountain. Oh yeah. Let's see, where was I? Um, well, where, where's uh, where's the mountain coming to play at? What what uh, is it a literal mountain or? Yes. Um. After I had my whatever coming to Jesus moment and I was incapacitated, um, almost incapacitated, it was almost made me retarded. Um, like I felt a, a bit of PTSD and a bit of PTSD and anxiety and fear and just it's a terrible fear for the next like five days or whatever. And I uh, went out to my grandfather's property and ran out there. Oh yeah, I already said this. Mm-hmm. Took off all my clothes and running naked and people calling cops on me. And uh, uh, it ended. It was a finale. It was a badass finale. Was a, this is a badass. And uh, it ended with uh, fucking five cops out there, five sheriff's department cops out there. And they found the fucking, the fucking drone at me and shit. And uh, I climb up in the tree. I climb up in this big old cypress tree. And I, uh, I jump out. I'm like, I'm just, I'm just, I just want a peace and quiet. I just want a peace and quiet. That's all I wanted on my mind. Like I went kind of batshit crazy and I just want to be in the wilderness with no noise, no humans, no nothing. And I got anything but when I tried to go out to that place because I got, instead of peace and quiet, I got people driving cars around me, sheriff's department cars and stuff. And just like, I don't know. And, and it, it ended with, I climb up on the cypress tree and I jump out at the high voltage power lines. I was like, you know what? I'm sick of this fucking place. Just take me home. Just take me home. I want to go home. Yeah. That was like fucking bullshit. Because because I just all I wanted was peace and quiet. And I jumped out of the high voltage power lines. And I'm like, rock and roll. I'm ready to go. I'm sick of the bullshit. Nobody but fucking bullshit. This place is crazy. And I failed. At jumping high enough to grab the high voltage power lines, power lines, and instead I fell to the swamp. It was like 20 feet beneath. And then the police got me and they handcuffed me and put me put me in their car and took me to the hospital. They took me to the hospital. They handcuffed me and took me to the hospital, and I was totally peaceful the entire time. <laughs> yeah, a noisy hands. Let me help you out with that. You gotta, you gotta tear it open. You gotta tear it open with a quickness. <laughs> Holy shit, dude! And he took me to the hospital. To the hospital, strapped me up in the. In the uh, they strapped me down. My hands and my feet strapped me down into the hospital room, and um, and then they took my blood. And uh, how how short were you from? Reach, I mean, I'm glad you didn't reach it, but how short were you from reaching the power line whenever you jumped? Probably about what? 10 feet. 15 feet? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. It's awesome. It's hilarious. But, uh, yeah, they took me to the hospital, strapped me down on there, like uh, as if I was, uh, you know, uh, I don't know. I don't know what they were doing. And they handcuffed me to the bed. They handcuffed me to the bed. And, um, um, it was very uncomfortable and there were people in the other rooms. It was basically, it was the ER, it was the ER, but it felt, it felt like the COVID admission point, but I'm not sure. It was just the ER is what I'm told, but they put me in the room and, um, I'm in this room and, um, I'm hearing just agony coming from the other rooms, just all screaming like they're like they're just being, I don't know, ah, they just sound so uncomfortable and full of anxiety, and I'm not sure what they're going through, what kind of pain they're suffering, but they seem to be suffering this horrible amount of pain um, coming from these rooms, and it's just like, I'm just like, what is going on in here? What's, oh man, this just sounds like a horrible place. I mean, I guess it's the ER, I guess it was, I don't know, but I'm handcuffed to the bed. And uh, they put me in there, and they got a t- they got a TV in there. It's a very small TV, and it's playing a fucking horror movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's playing a fucking horror movie, dude. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? 
And, and I asked the I asked the nurse, I'm like, can you please just fucking turn the TV off? Jesus. Turn the TV off. I don't want to see that. Hold up, y'all. This is my favorite part. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm sitting there. And, 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 and they played a horror movie. I'm just like, turn the TV. That's the last thing I want to look at yeah, right now. Yeah, like, why the fuck would you do that out of the hospital? <laughs> and y'all fucked up. You got here tonight. I tell you that. Yeah, yeah. Just turn off the TV, man. No, no. Fuck that. We're going to watch the Saw Marathon all night, y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but they but uh, so they turned the TV off. They turned the TV off, and they got me. They got me handcuffed to the bed. I'm handcuffed to the bed, and they got me strapped down. In addition to the handcuff, I'm strapped down with all four limbs tied to the bed with some straps. Holy shit! Man. With some fucking straps. Yeah. You think that was more from you being high risk or more from them worried about well he's just going to take his clothes off again we just he's, he's <laughs> do that. I don't know uh, I don't know but I didn't like it a bit no shit I, I wouldn't either that. man it was very uncomfortable I just wanted to be out of there with the quickness and I was in there and uh, stuck in, in that place of uh, fucking hell I, like I said I wanted I wanted to be peace and quiet with the nature and the wilderness and, and I got anything but now I'm strapped to a motherfucking bed good and all I wanted to be was with the Mother Earth. So how long how long were you uh, uh, incapacitated as far as strapped to the bed? Um, about forty five minutes. They came in there. They drew my blood. Um, and there were three metal plates. And I kind of have a fascination with geometry and noticing ninety degree shifts. <laughs> but and I could be wrong. But, um, I'm strapped to the bed. Behind me exists some uh, medical equipment, like the blood pressure machines and all the me- monitoring equipment. Right. That is behind me, and it exists behind a cavity that's cut out to the wall. And you just so happen to have a... Um, Kind of curtain, not a curtain, but a uh, like a basically garage door mechanism come and close behind, or excuse me, in front of the cavity where the blood pressure and shit stuff resides. Okay, I follow you. <clears throat> All right, so you got this metal door that closes and is able to um, isolate that equipment. And in front of me, <clears throat> there's a metal plate, and it's got. Two screws, uh, um, and they're oriented vertically. So you got one up high, one up low. That's looking directly in front of me. Looking to my left, I got another metal plate that basically um, runs the entire length of the wall, but only comes up about eh, halfway. And that metal plate got two screws in it that's oriented in exactly 90 degrees opposite orientation. So it's oriented. Um, horizontally horizontally you've got one screw one screw uh, two screws over here oriented horizontally and in front of me I got two screws oriented vertically and then to my right I've got four screws oriented in the shape of a square and it also runs the entire length of the wall and comes up to about halfway down and I'm strapped down in this motherfucking chair and I'm like, I have no idea what's going on right now. But at one point, the nurse came in, and she gave me, or she took my blood, and she said to me about my hand, my right hand, which happened to be handcuffed to the to the thing. She said, "Don't, um, don't move your hand too much, or this is gonna hurt extra, extra hard, or extra bad, or something like this." And I have no idea what that meant, but. <clears throat> I'm strapped to this motherfucker. And, um, hey, kid. I love this black cat. <laughs> Come here, black cat. But I'm strapped down to this thing, and I'm, 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 um, uh, I feel, uh, and, and uh, I don't know if this is true or uh, made it true, whatever. But I was like, <clears throat> I was like, uh, dude, they're about to cut my hand off with this, uh, with this handcuff. Mm. And I'm in this magnetic field. And I could be wrong. Probably I'm just I'm just retarded. But 
it felt to me that the handcuff was getting tighter and tighter and tighter. And that it was like going to slowly cut my hand off, like with the slowness. And I'm like, uh. <laughs> and, um, but I, I could be wrong. But, and, and it was just crazy that she said that to me, that it was like, don't, don't move your hand a lot or this is going to hurt a whole lot more right. as if the more I tried to fight the process, the slower I was going to die. I don't know. It was just wild. I could, I don't know. But, um, then, um, I was like looking for a way out of there. And they, and they, yeah, and at one point they closed, they closed the door. They closed the door to shield all the sensitive uh, electronic equipment. And, uh, <clears throat> I heard a vibration. I heard a, like an electromagnetic frequency. Almost like I was getting an x-ray. And at one point, and I don't know if this is true or not, or man, I hallucinated it or what, but it was like I had splotchiness on my skin, like I was being irradiated. Huh. Um, and I'm like, what the fuck are you guys doing? Because it was like I can feel it. I'm like, you know, like in that movie, that fucking crazy movie with the guy who went to, uh, he got sacrificed or whatever, he got in the EX. What was it with Matt Damon? Matt Damon, he went into the radiation tape chamber and got irradiated. Okay. She never seen that movie. <laughs> now nah, hallucinated in the future. It's just crazy, y'all. <laughs> but um, I don't know. I could be wrong. But then later, I was able to fish out from source of information I know that used to work there that there are metal plates under the bed, and that they maybe just X-rayed me. To make sure I didn't break any bones. Because I was running and jumping through the wilderness. Right. I don't know. I don't know which one is the truth. You never fucking know. But. I didn't enjoy that experience not one bit. And when I was in there. Um, after after I whatever got my x-ray or whatever you want to call it. I. Looked up at the door frame. I was looking for a way out. I'm like I gotta get fucking out of here. I gotta, I gotta find some clues. There's gotta be a way out of this. They gotta be a way out of the situation. And I look up, and I look at the door frame, and on the uh, door frame, on the top of the door frame, looking from the inside of the ER um, room, there's a uh, an arrow. There's a black arrow, and it's pointing to some people that are basically the attendants. They're just sitting on the outside of the uh, of the room. They're basically, they're observe, they're, I don't know, um, watch over nurses or whatever. But all of them are, are fucking need to be fired because they're all just fucking sitting there playing fucking Candy Crush. That's just fucking retarded. Fuck Candy Crush, dude. <laughs> what a waste of time. Whatever. Um, but they're, whatever. I just, I, uh, anyway, I fired them. But they're just sitting out there. And so I just made a conversation with them, trying to make friends with them or whatever. I'm like, this is my way out. If I talk to these people, they're going to let me out of here. And uh, talk to them and whatever, made friends, I don't know. And they, they so, trifling conversation. Um, and, but past the time, and uh, later on, um, the sheriff, one of the sheriffs walked through the hallway. And I looked up to him and I said, sir. And I don't know why I said that, or I just I just wanted his attention. I'm just That'll like, do it. get me the fuck out of here, dude. Like, like what am I doing in here? Like, I don't need to be up in here. I'm an innocent man. I never broke a law. I never broke a law. And he looked at me, and I looked at him, and our eyes met. And I was looking for the words to talk to him, but I couldn't find them. I don't know what to say. But he just looked at me and then he turned around. And then with his whatever gold clasp ring that he happened to have on his finger, he knocked it on the, on the table three times in front of the nurse's station. He said, one, two, three. And I, at the time, thought that that was a horrible thing. I'm totally buffed. I got screwed. I don't know what he just did, but he was like Judge Dredd. And he just, I'm so fucking screwed down. And the girl on the outside of the uh, um, room, she was like, 
she like looked and she was like, oh no. And she shook her head like, oh, this is a bad, this is a bad, this is, this is going to be bad. And I was like, did you look at that horrible thing he just did to me? I was just thinking it was the worst thing. I don't know what, why I interpreted it that way, but that's what I did. And she was like, no. And she was like, oh. Uh, she, she expressed a sense of concern over it. And um, a little while later, um, after my parents had been tricked into signing the 1013 form, because my parents and I were all like, we never wanted him to be confined against his will. And he's locked up in the hospital now. We want to try to get him out of the hospital as soon as possible. So someone got him to sign a 1013 form. And they're like, this is the fastest way to get him out here. And my parents probably just signed it without even reading it, man. you got to read what you fucking signed. Because I like, turned you over to the hospital staff instead of yourself. It is a form that says, we think he's a danger to himself or ah. others or some bullshit like that. We have no rights in those facilities. Mm. You are not a person. Yeah. Well, you, you can't be. You're, other, you're a patient, man. Mm -hmm. Well, you become property. That's one of the arguments against the... Um, uh, was it the 14th uh, Amendment yeah. is that there's an exception in the clause where it's like, except for crime of a punishment. Well, a crime of a punishment in the legal sense doesn't mean that there's a victim. It means that there's been an error that went against some sort of program, right? Some sort of order that's been set. So, like, I've had friends that have been, uh, maybe sometimes it was good for them, but they've been held against their will because of psychological reasons. Yeah. You know? And, where they and that's a label someone else can put on you. Yeah. That's a label someone else can put on you. I don't like that at all. It's not good, but it seems to be uh, one of those other pitfalls that uh, yeah, exists. It's sad. Yeah. It's sad. But they signed the 1013 form, and then the sheriff, and then they said, hey, we're going to take you by the ambulance, we're going to take you somewhere else. But then I got out, and then instead of going to the ambulance, the sheriff took me and I'm like I thought we were riding in the ambulance he's like no get your ass up in my car and so I fucking went to the uh, Legacy Crisis Center threw me in the fucking Legacy Crisis Center and uh, never wanted to be there either they want, was, uh, I'm now I'm uh, in prison I'm in prison I'm stuck in the Legacy Crisis Center now like all I fucking wanted to do was be in the wilderness right he put me in the fucking Legacy motherfucking Crisis Center and I go in the fucking that motherfucking place and uh I cop leaves me there and there are these two guys or guards and I'm just like I just want to be free and so I try to run through them I try to I don't try to hurt them or anything I just try to run around them to get to the exit right and they grab me and we get in a fight or in a, a bit of a tussle and uh, they beat me these two two sizable black guys two sizable black guys and I got on my face two marks right at the bridge of my nose. Right at the bridge of my nose, I got these two like like where they hit me or where I hit them or whatever happened. I don't, you know, we got in a fight. Oh, I mean, it wasn't it wasn't a bad fight, but it was a tussle. Um, and it, and it anyway, that was interesting. I, I later I later was like, this is the mark of the beast. Oh shit, I'm gonna die. <laughs> and uh, and uh. <coughs> They, they took me because, oh, yeah, we got in a tussle. And in my mind, I'm like, I'm like these dudes, I'm like, I'm, they brought me in this room, and it was very uncomfortable. It, it, it looked like a, uh, I mean, I guess maybe it's fine. I don't know. But it's like one of those desks that you go and you sit in, and it's like a kid's desk. You fold the tabletop down for 90 degrees. You fold it up and down. It kind of looks like that, but an adult version of it. Okay. With a, still a small thing, and I don't know. At the time, I was thinking this whole place is perverted, and this is just a just a crazy place. And I felt totally uncomfortable in there. And like these guys are totally like, I'm gonna get butt fucked up in there and raped and some shit. Like I have no idea where the fuck I'm at right now. I got thrown into the child child's into the I don't know. This place was just a fucking dungeon. Like I just fucking hated every second of it. And we got in a fight. And uh, at one point, I mean, when I was beat, I was on my knees, and, and this one guy was like, oh, yeah, you want some of this? And then, like, pointed his hips out at me or some shit. It was, like, fucking retarded, dude. Um, made me so uncomfortable. 
And I'm like, fuck. And I'm like, well, whatever. And I'm just put me in the fucking desk. So they sent me in the desk and then they just draw my blood. And that's all they do. They didn't, they didn't butt fuck me or anything. That shit, thank well, that's good. Yeah. That's it was terribly funny. scary. I was terrified. Totally terrified. Oh, and before I enter, oh yeah, I, was, I enter the room. And it, yeah, this made me very uncomfortable. I enter the room. Or on the way to entering the room, the lady who's watching all the cameras and shit, seemed like a nice lady, but she hands me a pair of uh, underwear and like, where are these? She says, where are these? This will make sure that everything stays in place. And it was some like, maybe really uncomfortable, kinky looking, lacy underpants with fucking like almost flash uh, <laughs> lacing. <laughs> Shit shooting out of the sides on the sides. Kind of the pair I have on right now. Actually. Badass. <laughs> but it just made me so uncomfortable. She's like, "You gotta fucking come inside. You gotta fucking come in this thing and and where do you, and, and go in this room here with this very uncomfortable looking desk and uh, get naked in front of these two guys and put on your fucking lacy panties." I wanted to fucking get the fuck out of there ASAP, dude. Yeah, I would probably feel of a similar manner myself. And that and that's why I got in a fight with those guys. But I was like, fuck it, whatever. So I put on the lacy panties. <laughs> but I put my pants back on. And then I went into the fucking crisis center. And they locked us down. And all you have to do is watch movies all fucking day. It was fucking hell, dude. And you, I just paced all around that place. I can't sit still, man. And uh, you can only go outside twice a day for ten minutes a day. At this time and that time. And if it was raining at the time you're supposed to go outside, they wouldn't move the time so that you could go outside. And I fucking love being outside and being in the sunlight and hanging out and moving around. I hate being cooped up in a fucking building. That place was fucking hell. But um, uh, during the first day or two, I met a, a guy, a very nice guy. And he was a black guy. And he had uh, very blonde hair, like, well, like Wesley Snipes or whatever. And uh, as if he had been spent a lot of time in the sun, and his hair had been bleached by the sunlight. The black guy. It was a very nice guy. We hung out, and we both just—I don't know—he was just chill as chill as fuck. He was a chill guy. I liked him. And uh, he and me and him both liked the experience of being outside and being in the nature and hanging out in the sunlight and stuff. And uh, we hung out, and, and I don't know. He was just a cool guy, and uh, shook my hand twice. I don't, I don't remember if there was an agree. There was no really set agreement, but just hanging out, shaking his hand, just hanging out. But I just recall shaking his hand twice. And uh, about two days after, Kiana walks through, and I don't, and uh, I'm attracted to her. But anyway, I later felt the need to try to help her get on her feet as if maybe I could be wrong this guy that I met in the crisis center the first time knew that I would try to do the right thing um, as if there's some kind of connection between her and him and uh, on my bible on my Jesus Bible right here. Uh, there we came on it. I don't know where it came from. But uh, a mark that's a, a yellow mark. It just, it. it just so happens to be the color, however, of Kiana's um, fingernail polish. But she swears up and down that she didn't touch my Bible and paint it with that color. Never did I while I was doing my nails. I don't know how this happened. So, but, and, and I've but seen stuff like that before. I've seen stuff like that, like, just change, man. It can wipe off. Um, anyway, where was that? Oh, it says, it's too many hell. But anyway, so I met Kiana, so I'm getting her on her feet. Yeah, that's right. So I picked her up afterwards, so that's fine. Um, but then after that, what did I do? Um, oh, also during the crisis center, I was in there and I met this guy. He was a really nice guy, too. But, um. We, we paced up and down. We shared our, our, our common interest of pacing up and down the hallway. <laughs> um, and uh, at one point, he asked me if I, he could have my shirt. And it was a far side shirt. And it was like of the uh, one of the lions. 
and they're trying to break into the safari jeep and you got these two like white white people in there and they're like uh, and the, the lions are standing up and they got a coat hanger and they're like trying to get the coat hanger and try to get it through the door through the door and the white people are like oh we better we better haul ass y'all this one's got a coat hanger <laughs> that was what was on the shirt and uh he said can i have your shirt and i said yes and i gave him my shirt and then later he was walking through later he was walking and um I didn't ask why, and I, and, I, and I never saw anyone else doing this, but it seemed like he was walking both with his parents, walking with his parents through the hallways, and they looked to be Jewish. <laughs> they looked to be Jewish, and uh, I didn't ask any questions, but they were just walking around one, one, I don't know, for 15 minutes or whatever, and uh, then the parents left, and then later on, maybe a day or two later, the guy came up to me. He was like, hey, man, what do you want to do? And I said, like, solar panel stuff. Like solar panels, I'm into that shit. He said, like, "Okay." And he walked off. And I don't even remember his name, but he's a super nice guy. But um, I met this guy in the in the the crisis center. Um, but then later got discharged, and they or I was doubting the experience. I was like. And also because the Legacy Crisis Center is just by a bunch of Transformers and shit. And I'm like, this is some hallucination bullshit. They might control me from the power lines. This some bull- Maybe this ain't real. Maybe this wasn't real. I don't know about all this. So, um, then later, I uh, drove to Wahala, South Carolina to stay in the mountains. And I'm like, this is, this is totally... Out of all cell phone tower radiation, I'm out of all uh, power line radiation. I'm, I'm, I'm as isolated as I could be unless I could go to Mars. And I go out there, and I'm hanging out in the wilderness because I know it's a place up there that I've been there before. And I meet this guy. I'm reading. I'm reading this Bible, reading my Jesus Bible in the Book of John, where it was like, you know, don't be, don't be nervous when you meet Jesus. Don't be nervous when you meet Jesus. Prepare yourself. Prepare your mind. Whatever. Um, and it's about the 10th hour, be about, about the 10th hour and Jesus, whatever. And I'm in my car and I'm in Walhalla, South Carolina and I'm there and there's, uh, I'm there in the parking lot, parking area and it's about 10 o'clock in the morning and there's a guy pull up in his truck, pickup truck and he gets out of his truck and he's got really long legs. He's a tall, lanky guy, he's skinny, tall, lanky, skinny. And he's got his two walking sticks. And uh, he just gets out of his car, and, and I'm already there, and we just kind of start conversation just naturally. And uh, he explains to me that he's there to look for um, a piece of plastic tubing or something that, that had gotten lost from his little water filtration apparatus that he had. It was some small piece, some very small piece, the size of a bottle cap or something that he had just misplaced somewhere along his hike from maybe a previous day. And he had borrowed this water filtration device from a friend, so it was really important for him to find or make sure he tried to find the piece that he lost. And uh, he said, Let's, he said uh, um, I said, well, I'll, I'll walk with you, man. That'd be cool. And I had my Indian moccasins on because I was obsessed with the Mother Earth and Native American culture and wearing my Indian moccasins and shit. And I had my any moccasins on, and and they didn't have a whole lot of cushion, and I was having at the same. I was having, they didn't have a whole lot of cushion, and I had kind of sore feet from rocking on the rocks and shit. But I still try. I still kept up with him, and he walked fast. Kiana was trying to keep up, but she couldn't. She couldn't walk as fast as him. But I kept up with him. He was a fast walker. I liked it. And uh, he had the he had the two walking sticks too, and he was getting it too, man. He's he's a, he's a good hiker. And um, I just went and hung out with him, and we discussed plants and the nature. And uh, 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 I spoke to him about what I learned about. Uh, I took a class by a guy with like a foraging class and stuff. And I'm like, oh, this is called Usnea, and it's supposedly got medicinal properties, and you can eat this. And we were talking about different edible plants and things like that, and just hanging out and walking. We walked for like four hours or five hours just talking about shit. Um, mostly nature and stuff he's a cool guy just hanging out and uh, uh, he said 
Oh, we found like some of the U.S. Geological Survey markers up in the mountains and stuff, and just noting like, oh, that's interesting. I wonder what that's about, you know, and just, um, I don't know, just being curious about the world around us and stuff and asking questions about it. Um, But one of the things he told me was that he was a big believer in karma and that a lot of religion today has become a mess. You know, such a mess or something like that. Something, something to that effect. Um, a lot of religion today has become a mess. He's, like, he's a big believer in karma. Karma. And it was very simple. <laughs> it was very simple. And I was like, I was, yeah, and um, we were hanging out and he uh, uh, went back, went, I talked to him. It couldn't have been Jesus though because he was a sinner. It couldn't have been for real Jesus because he was a sinner. Because he had been locked up and like, well, he went to um, rehab for being addicted to opioids and stuff. And had been to drug rehab and stuff. So it couldn't have actually been Jesus. I don't know. Jesus but hung, hung out maybe. with hookers. You know maybe I mean? it could have been. I don't know. But He, he made, uh, uh, if uh, you're... Uh, Looking at it from the uh, uh, literal perspective, uh, yeah. uh, wine from water, you know what I mean. He was a partier. Jesus knew how to get down. He like he he, he hung yeah. out. He hung out with uh, with prostitutes and uh, folks who like to party. You know what I mean. Like my my question is this: If Jesus came for the sinners, and your goal is to try to be fishers of men, then. Does it make sense that you would be capable of a language that is appropriate for the purposes of communicating with sinners? So, why can't I drink beers and smoke cigarettes and say fuck every two seconds and shit and cuss words because that's how sinners talk? Yeah. Typically. But if they don't talk that way, you don't talk to them that way. There was a um, there's an interesting perspective I read. It was on some sect of uh, Satanism where it said that the devil actually came and used the name Yahweh and perverted the commandments of uh, of the true God and then added in selfish commandments like uh, uh, you'll honor no other gods but me and then had yeah. churches and institutions uh, look at things that were pleasurable and start demonizing them and things that were uh, considered vice were uh, considered evil and like not virtuous okay. it, was, it was an interesting take on it. I wish I could remember what the actual sect of uh, that uh, philosophy or ideology was but uh-huh. it was um, it, it took an interesting turn on uh Satan means adversary, right? So, like, the ideology of this was that it was actually the Judean God that yeah. was Lucifer or the devil, and that deceived everyone huh, okay. uh, using a, uh, a limited scope of reality. Okay. And um, I don't think it addressed Christianity. It was more or less addressing uh, just was it the, the Torah. I think is uh, the, okay. the the Old Testament. You know what I mean? Okay, yeah. But um, it was an interesting uh, look uh, on uh, uh, what we were talking about as far as like, you know, would you, would you not be able to communicate with people if you're trying to redeem people and have them be a, a better human being yeah. and, you know, yeah. you know, get them to be more Christ-minded yeah. then you would have to be able to communicate with, you know, uh, sinners and vagabonds and vagrants and, and of the sort, you know. Yeah. You, would, you wouldn't be from the pulpit uh, saying, burn the witch. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think just be forgiving and be uh, grateful. So do you think this uh, lanky fellow in the truck was uh, was Jesus or was a... Uh, maybe, uh, no. So full of uh, the spirit that maybe that it... Uh, you sort of uh, had a had a had a bond with them where you tapped into that sort of Christ energy. Yeah, maybe that was the case, and and I think that's probably the lesson and the goal is that he happened to be Jesus for me at that moment. I get that, and 
I need to maybe try to be Jesus for other people. You know what I mean? You try to mimic that copycat. Right. Um, And just do what he said. I like the bracelets. So what would Jesus do? What would Jesus do at every decision? Think about it, you know. Well, maybe, you know. Strive for righteous decisions. Now, do you think... I've uh, looked into this. I think it's kind of interesting with this... Um, uh, the zodiac calendar, right? Changing okay. from Pisces. I'm a Leo, baby. <laughs> I'm like a bro. I'm a, I'm a cusp, so I'm uh, mostly Pisces in my sun, yeah. but uh, with Aquarius as well, depending on the calendar. Okay. Um, but um, it's uh, Pisces, arguably, is what it is. But um, <laughs> with this with this change, as we enter the age of Aquarius, okay. right? Do you think that an apocalypse will come that will be akin to uh, uh, revelations or uh-huh. uh, of something of that sort? Do you think that uh, we'll see it in our lifetimes, if so? I don't think so. No? I don't think this is the end. I think it's the beginning. I think it's the beginning of a great new future. It's... Uh, uh, Similar to the uh, the death card in tarot, right? It's, okay. It's a death card in tarot doesn't mean necessarily that like the end of something or the, a nightmare or anything yeah. like that. It's transition. It's change. Yeah, I think everything's about redual. I have, I have a, like an obsession with the symbol of the phoenix. <laughs> symbol of the phoenix, burning bird. Uh, renewal, change, progress. What's the future look like? Let's make that happen. I like this guy, Jacques Fresco. He's a brilliant, well, was a brilliant man. No one listened to him. Like, there's a video of him online from, like, 1975, and he was talking to Larry King and stuff, and he was just like, I'm telling you guys, this is a way to do it. This whole debt-based monetary system is killing you guys. You have, they're telling you you need to change. And no one listened to him. Um... But I met him. He's a, he's a cool guy. But I really like his book. It's called Future by Design. Future by Design. Like, how do we design a better future? Let's make a better future. Was he the guy? Was he in one of the Zeitgeist movies? Yes, he was. Yes, he was. Okay, yeah, I yeah. Met the, Pretty I'm, fascinating dude. You actually you met him? I love, yes. I flew, to cool. Venus, I flew to Venus, Florida. I flew to Venus, Florida and met him when he was like 101 years old or 100 years old. And then a month later after I met him, he died. But I love talking to him and meeting him. And I asked some pretty... I asked some... Uh, a lot of other people, they didn't ask... I don't know. I shouldn't be arrogant, but... Uh, they didn't ask no, very no, good no. questions. Please. They, <laughs> they, they didn't ask very good questions. But I asked some questions, and I could tell there was, there was a moment where his eyes lit up, and he looked at me, and he was like, he gets it. Because I was a critical thinker like he was. Right. And uh, we kind of read it, so we liked each other. But he talked, spoke a lot about human nature. Um... And yeah, the Zeitgeist movies are very fascinating, you know. What you know, you, if you're not nurtured when you're young, you'll die, and held when you're dying. Yeah, there is and one what, rant he went on where he was like, he's like, until people realize that these aren't men and women problems, they're not black and white problems, yeah. they're not rich and poor problems, they are human problems. And until we're willing to accept that and try to solve the problems in that manner, we will continue to fail. I was like, that's a really good perspective. Yes, it is. It, it takes the whole. Uh, notion of uh, um, you know identity politics or yeah. like you know group think yeah. and all yeah. that stuff and cast it aside and says just focus on the problem. Yeah, it doesn't matter how the two is written. Right, it's a two. Yeah, work with that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What's interesting is the way he uses language to change his perspective because he's like I'm going to substitute black, white, yellow, whatever with human. Yeah, you change your language. And you focus on that, and you change your perspective. So that's interesting, too. These, yeah. Yeah, he's right. He's a very rare, wise man. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you think a UBI uh, will be uh, something that we see uh, uh, in the near future? What's UBI? Uh, universal Basic Income. I don't know. I don't see why it's not possible, though. We, if we have all these robots and stuff... Well, plus, if they're printing money, like they just did, like this quote, we basically unquote, have the quote unquote CARES Act. We have robot slaves now. For for a lot Why of things. Why can't we build robot slaves? 
and we benefit off of the robot slaves. Just make sure we don't put too much AI on them, and they turn into Terminator. I don't think it'll get. <laughs> I don't think it'll get to that point. Um, I, th- I think it, like. So there are limitations with AI, you know what I mean? Because it can only work with the data we provide. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like how like a, you know, holy text would talk about things like uh, demons or archons or jinn. How like they can't, they can't create life like like God could. They okay. can only manipulate and distort something that already exists. Okay. Right. So the uh, an, an analogy is if you give them a blank canvas, they can do nothing with it. If you give them a canvas that has art on it, they can then twist the art on the canvas to be whatever they wish it to be or will it to be. Okay. Interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. Where was that? Where was what? Oh, my Jesus story. So, yeah. So, uh, my Jesus or some guy, and uh, I even had my note. I had my notepad out there. I had my notepad, and because I wasn't nervous when I met Jesus, I had my notepad, and he was talking to me, and I'm like, hold on. I was like, hold on, let me take some notes. And I, and I pulled my notepad out, and he said this to me. He said, eliminate from your vocabulary. I'm reading this to you a lot. I'm reading this to you. This is my paper. You can. I'll show it to you, Colt. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I wrote this in the wilderness now. He said, eliminate from your vocabulary. Can't, but, try. Eliminate that from your vocabulary. Can't, but, and try. And read Foxfire books obtained from thrift thrift stores. And look into Dr. Seuss' dark stuff. And rub quartz together. Rub quartz together. Rub quartz together. Huh. And he said, here's some homework. Here's some homework for you. And he gave me two. We found it in the wilderness, too, in the Valhalla. He was like, we, he, we were talking about the rocks and different shit, and he was like, these are this quartz right here. And um, he said, this is some homework for you. Take this. You can't see it now because it's daylight, but take it in the dark in the nighttime and do it, and you'll see what I'm talking about. And uh, I got the quartz, and uh, later on, uh, I was in the in the dark time, and I, and I pushed them together with friction. It creates sparks. What the hell? I never knew that. That's the fucking lightning, man. I'm Gandalf, bitch. <laughs> I'm Gandalf, <laughs> motherfucker. I'm Neo. What's that? Shit. It's interesting <laughs> that you said that the uh, it's called Walhalla. Yeah, Walhalla. Yeah. But I'm part German, so I'm going to pronounce it. I'm going to pronounce it. Valhalla. Valhalla. Yeah, Valhalla. yeah, yeah, yeah. Valhalla. Valhalla. That's what I'm pronouncing Valhalla. it, because I'm part German, dude. Yeah, Eden, Avalon. Hefeweizen. Um, Hefeweizen. Um, yeah, fuck. What's a... What's a uh, Oh my gosh, there's a cool turf for it for paradise as well. It's it sounds like Shabla Goo, but it's not Shabla Goo. <laughs> oh my what? god. Um I forget, but yeah, like you know, Valhalla, the halls of Valhalla, you yeah, know, it's, it's it's paradise. It sounds it's badass. A, it's, yeah, it's a it's a it's it's an afterlife, right? Yeah. You know? So the fact that you had a a religious uh, yeah. transcendental experience at such a place. Hey, but guess where this motherfucker was from though? Mm. Salem. Oh, really? Fucking Salem witch trials. <laughs> He's the Wiccan Jesus. We're all going to fucking hell. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> well, John, this has been officially the longest podcast we've done. Badass. About, uh, about four hours of this motherfucker. <laughs> Dude, thank you so much for uh, yeah. for coming on and yeah, sharing th- your perspective. And yeah, thank you so stories. much for having me. I appreciate your hospitality. Absolutely. Thanks for, uh, for uh, yes, you too, Bonkers. They're making you famous. You're the next Joe Rogan. I'm the next Elon Musk. Right. Sir, Shit. Coulter, motherfucking. <laughs> and now you're one of the four horsemen in the Revelation prophecy. And you and now, you know, and you just made your career on. John motherfucking Baptist. Wow. I'm the donkey. I'm the liberal. I'm a liberal. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a liberal, uh, liberal. Liberal Jesus. Liberal Jesus. Jesus was a liberal man. I would say so. Yeah. Pretty liberally minded uh, 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 conversationalist. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean. Yeah. I, I I definitely don't think he was a uh, yeah. uh, 
a, a, a corporatist by a by yeah any exactly <laughs> the usury we got we got to figure out that that problem it's making a worse world for the future for the for the children well, shit man well come back uh, come back again we'll uh, yes, we'll unpack some uh, some political stuff and whatnot that but, sounds great man hell yeah thank you so much for having me awesome. thank you later y'all.